G for the first time again. Sort of weird. Uh, let's just wait and see. There we go. Sup, ladies and gentlemen, I call on here and welcome uh, back to each and every one of you. And of course, if you are new to the channel, if you're watching this over on YouTube, remember to slap that like button, hit that subscribe button, and more importantly, come watch over on Twitch. The link, as always, is in the description down below. Now, for those of you that have been living under a rock, for those of you that is maybe here for the very first time, I've been without power for uh, a while, <laughs> so uh, if I am a little bit caveman today, please, please bear with me. Uh, if you've spent two days, a little bit more than two days, in complete fucking darkness, you'd probably feel like a caveman too. Feels like all technology is now new. <laughs> uh, I've, I've literally, this is the first time I'm sitting down at my PC again, and I literally sat down to start up the stream. So that's, that, that's the story. Pikirku, how you doing, bro? I was just thinking about you. Well, then I'm happy to be here. How you doing, Pikirku? Solid Snake. Thank you for the tier one sub, dude. Really appreciate that. Five months in a row. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Enoch, how you doing, brother? Uh, Papa Shango, how you doing? I'm, I'm getting some... I don't know. Everything seems off. Everything seems weird. What's going on with the music? Can you guys hear the music at all? More Bruli, how you doing? Lucky Penguin, how you doing? Can you guys hear any music? Because I can barely hear it, and it's on the same level as you. So I'm I'm exactly the same level as you, and I I sort of feel like I'm, I'm not hearing any music. Um, I don't know what's going on. Uh, there's been a new update, and now the update is everything's just weird. Anyways, uh, Sammy Lynn, how you doing? It's good. Okay, as long as you guys can hear the music, I am fucking happy with that. Um, it feels like I've been, like, literally, as I was just saying before the stream, or as the stream was starting, but before any of you actually joined in, uh, it feels like I am back uh, in the Stone Age, and I'm a, I'm a caveman that's just been introduced to technology. Two days of complete and utter fucking darkness. Um, this is, I literally switched on my PC, and I, I, went, I, I, I went live. So, here we are. Uh, so it's very strange to me. Everything feels sort of off. Nothing feels quite in place. It's, it's very, very interesting. Um, Malifia, how are you doing? Uh, how are you doing today? Steak and stuff? I, I cannot complain. Uh, Valenax, how are you doing? I want to go back to sleep, but I'm at work already. Oof. Just sleep at work, bro. Like, just, just tell your boss, no, bro. I'm, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go take a nap. I'm tired. Uh, I'm sure he'll understand. I mean, unless he's a fucking monster, in which case maybe you won't understand. All right, I've I've done my duties now, as a, as as all professional content creators do, posting that I'm live and shit, so everyone knows. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, since I I wasn't able to spend Sunday night with you, how's everyone doing? How, how was your weekend? Usually, this is a question that I ask on a Sunday night, right? What did you do for the weekend? Well, uh, this time around, I spent my Sunday night in, in like, uh, the Middle Ages, I guess you could say. Alodi, how are you doing? This is good for you. Not sleeping better. Lucky Penguin, not really, right? Because South Africa currently is in the midst of a, a, an incredible cold front. So... You know, there's no electricity, which means you, it's like ice. It's like fucking ice is what it was like sleeping. Um, so, yeah, it wasn't great. Uh, Grey Wolf Dragon, how you doing? Joski, how you doing? Uh, you lovely people. Blue Fairy, how you doing? Uh, thank you very much, by the way, to Grey Wolf Dragon and Joski for the first time chat. Happy to have you guys at the stream. Very happy to see newcomers here. It's always good. It seems like we're getting a lot of new people into the stream, which I love. Wild boy, how you doing, bro? Hey, really nice to see you back and safe. Purpose be praised. Trust the purpose. Fuck the purpose. Fuck the purpose. Zig Zig, do not even get me started. The Arbiter is similar to my president, so fuck the Arbiter. Um, good to have you back, dude. Missed you, Alori. Missed you too. Uh, thank you very much. I'm very happy to be back, by the way. Uh, Freightward, thank you very much for the first time chat, dude. Really appreciate it. Welcome to the channel. Uh, Cat Touches, how are you doing? Fabi, hello there. How are you? I uh, hope you're having a good day. Um, my day has gotten better since uh, 3 a.m. this morning. Like, at 3 a.m. this morning, my day finally got better. Uh, after two days of fucking hell. Um, but, yeah, we're... we're I, I guess uh, the worst is behind us until next month when it all blows up again. 
and uh, we'll spend the next two days in fucking darkness. This is this is what's fun. Uh, the new book Cosmology brought me in. Grave of Dragon, then I'm very happy to have you here. We are going to be talking about the new book. I've got some new spoiler leaks uh, from the fucking two people in the world that already have their book. Um, my viewers have been nice enough to actually share some of the leaks and stuff with me. Uh, because apparently, uh, Blizzard is keeping the new book a complete and utter fucking secret. Uh, Marcinta, thank you for seeing what's up. Really appreciate that. Seven months in a row. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Nice to hear from you again. I am so happy to be with all of you again. You have no idea. Um, it is the cycle. You're telling me. Holiday, Emily, how are you doing? Happy to have you here. So, what's everyone been up to? Fabi, don't tell me you don't know about the new book. It is a cuppa, right? The book is a complete and utter fucking joke. Um, not the book itself. Well, actually, you could say that the book is a joke because what book, right? Um, but yeah, the, the launch of the book, basically it launched to the, uh, realization of everyone that no one can get their hands on the fucking book, uh, which really sucked, right? Do you think Tara is going to be the next Dalaran? Um, Tara? Oh, Tazavish. Um, I have not been inside Tazavish yet, so I have no idea. <laughs> I genuinely have no idea. Um... But I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, that, it would be weird if Blizzard... Like, that would be the first time Blizzard took a dungeon and made it a capital city, right? Or even some kind of capital city. Currently at work, training meeting in about uh, an hour and a half. Oh, fuck. I hate meetings, and I hate training meetings more. I'm good. How are you on? Having my surgery in about seven months and at least four months. I lost 12 kilos, so I feel really great. Holiday, congratulations! Congratulations. Uh, I'm myself on the journey to losing weight. I know how hard it is. Believe you me, I am well aware of the challenges of weight loss. Uh, Moni, how you doing? Scrappy Coco, how you doing, bro? I guess I'm glad that I at least had the world first to watch. It was a pretty good race, in my opinion. Is the race over now? Uh, I saw on Twitter last night with uh, about 12% battery left that there were some problems with Echo and... Uh, did Echo actually get it? Oh my god. Wait, Echo is the, the European guild, right? Wow. Congratulations to them, because I saw on Twitter that a lot of people were saying if this, if this kill comes down to the reset, that's gonna be fucked up. And, uh, then I thought to myself, well, if Echo doesn't want it to come down to the reset, they're just going to have to fucking keep grinding it until hopefully it goes down. So I'm really, I'm really glad that they got it. It once again shows that Europe is simply superior whenever it comes to the world first race, as it should be. As someone that used to support uh, Paragon all the way back in the day, this would be, of course, before any of your day. None of you would know who Paragon was, uh, but they used to be uh, the best, the number one guild in the world. They, they, they ruled for a very long time. Like, Method wasn't even close. It used to be a race between Method and Paragon, but we say race only to be nice to Method. Um, Paragon destroyed every other guild, right? Um, so I used to be a huge Paragon fan back in the days of the World First Race. Uh, then, of course, when Paragon disbanded, uh, I joined... Uh, I basically got on the Method hype train until such time where I sort of lost hope or any sort of interest in the World First Race. Just because... So, you know, I, I hate to be a fuckerier. I hate to be, like, immediately on the negative train. But Blizzard have been looking for an eSports forever, right? They have gone out of their way to design games so that those games can be turned into esports then finally one of their oldest games presents itself as a viable esport and uh, blizzard wants nothing to do with it no we didn't come up with this idea fuck them the world first race is exactly how esports should be born it's when the people the community start their own thing to see who is the best and then the company, like Riot, way back in the day, step in and say, okay, what, I, what about we make this official for you guys, right? We'll help you set up tools to make this more of an official race. And then you get 
LEC, you get LCS, you get an official fucking thing, right? Blizzard spends years and years, right? They they even make Heroes of the Storm just so that they can get a piece of the esports pie. Every esport that Blizzard tries fails miserably, and I mean miserably. When's the last time anyone heard anything about the Overwatch Ellie Giggle League, right? No one cares about Overwatch whatsoever. No one watches it, and the people that do watch it probably just more like a pity watch, right? You're sort of watching it because you want to support Blizzard. You're not really into it because who knows what the fuck is going on in Overwatch. Um, and then one game comes up that actually presents itself, the world first race. People are glued to the world first race. I myself am not so much, but you know, there's there's a massive audience for it. People love it. And Blizzard just goes, yeah, yeah that wasn't our idea. Our idea, we're not gonna support that. So really Blizzard, the fact that you don't have an esports, it's on you. It's your fucking fault. You could have had an esports. You could have had a massive esports, but no, 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 no. Because it's not your idea, it will not be your esports. Well, in, in that case, go fuck yourself. Uh, so yeah, uh, Hots is fun too. Bliss shit on their own esports. Hots could have been great, but rather than stick with Heroes of the Storm, fixing the problems that people had with that, and actually making it into a great game that would work for an esports, uh, Blizzard wants quick money. So. Yeah, going back and trying to finish, uh, fix things, just not their thing, right? Uh, they're not even going to dive into that. Blizzard Severe, ADHD, getting too distracted with other shit and losing focus and what long-time players really want. Uh, I don't think it's about distraction. I think it's uh, it's the fact that they don't know, right? Uh, Lord Italian, by the way, thank you much for the follow. Really appreciate that, bro. Welcome to the channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I, think it's, I don't think it's distraction. I think it's genuinely that they don't know. Um... I realize that this is going to be a very controversial opinion, and I realize that many people don't like this opinion, and I fully understand that, but I am 95% certain that the vast majority of Blizzard developers have never even logged into World of Warcraft. And I would go so far as to say that a clear majority of Blizzard developers have never even played their own games. In fact, I could go so far as to say that there is a large group, probably not a majority, but a large group of Blizzard developers that aren't even gamers. But I'm, I'm willing to put that out there. There is a, a subsection of the Blizzard employee base that they design the games just for the fucking salary. They've never even played games. They think a mobile game and a PC game are the same thing. Same, same, no difference, <laughs> right? Uh... So yeah, a side effect I am unsure of still is my body is contouring and toning and I'm getting abs. My friend said uh, it will be fine. I mean, I don't think abs is a bad thing, Hollet. Um, I don't think you should worry about getting abs. Unless, of course, that's not the look you want to go for. For example, we just had Wild Boy admitting on the channel that what he wants is at six fucking five, or however fucking tall you are, Wild Boy, to be a twink. I'm sorry, wild boy. I'm not very clued up on the gay lifestyle and shit, but aren't twinks like smallish feminine boys or some shit? I don't know. They're they're like smaller feminine boys, right? So I don't know if at six five at giant size, you could go. I'm a twink now. <laughs> I don't think that's how it fucking works, bro. Uh, I think at 6'5", you should just be okay with being a masculine gay guy. Um, <laughs> that, that, that would be my personal opinion on it. At 5'11", my boyfriend is 6'5". Oh, yeah. Well, at 5'11", you're still quite tall, I think. I like my man Fluffy and Cuddly. Um, around here, everyone wants to go to college to build games. Yes, but they shouldn't. Uh, a lot of them have Final Fantasy Avatar on Twitter, so yeah, they're playing games. Uh, Martin asked that just because they have the avatar doesn't tell you that they actually play games, right? Uh, for example, I could get an avatar of, uh, an anime tomorrow. I've never watched anime, right? I could stop pretending to be into anime, even though I've never watched it. Um, now, obviously, I am being a little bit facetious, right? Uh, and I am being very ignorant. I realize that. Um, of course, they play games, and of course, they... they they most likely do play World of Warcraft, but they don't play it in a way that other players play it. They, they play it in a very different way from what the rest of us play games, at least as far as I can fucking tell. Um, 
not always fame, but usually smaller. It's more I just don't know, but we'll be... Well, I'll be fine with it. Uh, gonna look good on the beach. Hey, as long as you're happy, that's really all that matters, Harlot. Uh, last year's Babby, how you doing? How you doing? Uh, so I do have some uh, lore that we're going to be discussing today, but I do have to ask all of you to be okay with a little bit of South African ranting. Um, I've not had the ability to rant anywhere yet. Um, I did, however, uh, repeatedly call... Um, my government dictators on Twitter because I felt like that was sort of skirting the line of what would be allowed in South Africa and what wouldn't because um, you could get locked up in South Africa for saying mean things to people that includes the government but I thought dictator was sort of like a, a nice middle ground between you know having my dictators in charge and then pretending to be a government um, so yeah that, that's sort of the only ranting I've done so far so, in, in a bit, if I start losing my fucking mind, um, just know that I've been suffering for two days without, um, without electricity, and um, I'm not happy about it. I am not happy. Not one fucking bit. Um, but I'll, I'll first sit here and chat to you guys before I start my rant. But I do know a lot of people are actually interested in it, because a lot of people have been asking about everything that's happening in South Africa. So I thought I'll, I'd inform you guys today about that shit. Um, Angawar, how you doing? Dragon Wolf, how you doing, brother? Uh, Big Ronnie, how you doing? Get some of, of it out now. We're interested, th uh, though, hoping uh, your misfortune, educate the world some. Shay CD, I don't see that happening because the, the basic fundamental principle of the world is wherever certain things do not work, they were not done correctly. And... Um, then another country tries it, it doesn't work, and then the rest of the world just goes, oh, but that's not really how you should do it. Everyone seems to have their own idea of how certain ideologies should be implemented in the world, um, and whenever they fail, the other people go, oh, but that was wrong. That's not how you implement that. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't see South Africa being a lesson for the rest of the world. In fact, I see South Africa as being a fucking blueprint for the rest of the world. Um... No, they don't discount shit, Dragon Wolf. No, no, you pay. You you keep paying rates and taxes. You keep paying. So I have prepaid electricity, which means I pay ahead of time. And then uh, I only use the units that I've bought. Um, when the power went out, I had 350 units on my meter. When it came back on, I had 325. So I'm not sure who used my electricity in the time that i had no fucking power right so i'm not i'm not i'm not entirely someone needs to explain this to me i already sent an email and i was like uh so i just didn't have power for two days and somehow 25 units have just gone which is like units for two days but like that's two days worth of units so someone needs to explain to me where the fuck did those you used my units like, who had power when I didn't have power? Because this doesn't seem fine. Um, so hopefully they get back to me and hopefully they explain where those units fucking went. Well, well, thank you much for the follow. Really appreciate that. I vote we start a GoFundMe for Akalon to move wherever he wants. Uh, Blue Fairy, uh, I would not accept that. Ever. Um, it's not... That's not my nature. Uh, I could... I, I would rather die in South Africa than ever set up a GoFundMe for anything. As much as I appreciate the, the thought, um, I don't think content creators should rely on their viewers for shit like that. Uh, I'm, I'm sort of big on self-reliance, as most of you know. I preach individualism. I preach selfishness. And I believe that people should take care of themselves. Uh, and a GoFundMe... So I don't have a problem with like when people sub on Twitch, when people become patrons, because there's actual services that I supply for the money. A GoFundMe is no service supplied, right? It's just people giving money. I don't, I don't like that. Um, I feel like, I feel like as a content creator, if I want to move to a different country, I should save up and I should do it. So I appreciate the, uh, I appreciate the thought, but I would never do it. So they are charging you for power you aren't getting? Isn't that illegal in some way? Nothing is illegal in South Africa, Dragon Wolf. You have to understand something. South Africa have rules for thee, but not for me. 
right? So whenever it comes to the government, they can pretty much do whatever the fuck they want. My government is very similar to what one could describe as um, uh, a king or a queen. You know, something similar to that. So if they do something, they, they can simply sort of go, yeah, but I, I didn't mean this in a bad way, so I'll just do it anyways. And the, gov uh, the country will generally go, oh, okay, no worries. Um, so unfair, uh, illegal. These are words that my, my government really play with. Um, they skirt around the edges of those very quickly. Move to Mongolia. I know nothing about Mongolia. I, I, I don't even know what the language is there. How the fuck would I be able to move there? Isn't Mongolia like very poor? Purple stuff? If I move somewhere, I don't want to move to another place that's like South Africa. Right? My problem is where to? So this is, it's nice to say Akalon move, right? Just get out of South Africa. All right, no problem. Where to? Which country do I move to that, that believes the same things that I believe in? Because every other country that I could possibly move to is going to make me do things that I do not fucking agree with. It has its problems, but it's a lot better than most places. Um, this, America used to be quite high on my list. In fact, I have always wanted to be an American. Always. My entire life, I have always wanted to be an American. Um, I, I love the Founding Fathers. I love the Constitution. I think the, the Constitution of America is probably one of the greatest documents ever written. Um, you know, I've written the documents of the Constitution, like how they actually wrote the Constitution. Uh, I know a lot about American history. I know a shit ton about your politics. I really like America. I don't like the direction that America is going in right now, though, right? So as things exist right now in America, not that fond of where things are going. And it has nothing to do with your president. I couldn't give two fucks who's the president of any country. Um, I actually felt this way when Trump was in office as well, because I'm talking about people. I, I think presidents are overrated and they may as well just get fucking shot, right? They're useless. Most presidents are completely fucking useless. Who cares? Um, it's the people, right? When you have a majority of people screaming for things that I've literally lived through in my life, I go, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. When all these people go, yeah, yeah, we want the government to provide us with everything, I immediately go, oh my fuck, things are gonna go so badly. <laughs> Cause I've lived that, right? I've, I've lived that. I live that right now. Right, where the government supplies every well, supplies everything. It, it's supposed to supply everything. It supplies nothing, right? Um, but because it supplies it, no one else is allowed to supply it because the government has a monopoly on it, and then you don't get it. <laughs> so that's sort of my uh, England would have been another country that I would have absolutely loved, but there doesn't seem to be any sanity left in England. Uh, you have the Tories that's completely fucking nuts. You have Labour that's completely fucking nuts. And then you have the British people going, all right, we're getting fucked either way. Which seems to be the rest of the world right now. It seems to be every country in the world. You have one party that's completely fucked. You have the other party that's completely fucked. And you have the people bent over going, please just be gentle, right? That, it's like, what the fuck? Uh, like, how have we got to this? How, how, how can you fix this? I don't think you can fix this. I, I think genuinely the world needs to learn its lesson. Um, I think what needs to happen is... Um, and this might be very sad to say, but it is true. The world needs to adopt socialism and communism. Uh, people need to know what it's like to live in gulags and have their family members killed, um, them killed, their human rights completely destroyed. Uh, they need to know. Uh, there's a joke uh, which I actually felt was extremely apt. Um, what it, uh, what, what did socialists use before candles? light bulbs <laughs> uh lenin vladimir lenin actually did say that um
communism is socialism with electricity. <laughs> so, uh, you know, but the communists also didn't have a lot of electricity, right? Um, at the at the end of the day, the world needs to try these things. And then once they've tried it and they realize that it's a complete... Because here's... You want to know how you know that socialism and communism isn't good when people from Eastern Europe go, fuck no, because they've lived it. The vast majority of Eastern Europeans know exactly what it was like. Their fathers and their mothers was crushed under the boots of socialism and communism. So when they tell you, no, thank you, you should fucking listen. You should pay attention and go, okay, maybe they know. Maybe they know that there's no such thing as a good government and that the nice government that wants to give you shit only wants to give you shit insofar as it leads to power. And once they have all the power, then they stop giving you shit. Um, look at what happened to Germany back in the day. I would like to say uh, they learned a thing or two. I would say from of all of the European countries, uh, Germany and Scandinavia is probably the best situated to deal with a lot of the storms. Um, the Scandinavian countries, with the exception probably of Sweden, seems to be quite open to the free market um, and quite risk averse to socialism in too great a numbers. Germany, same thing. Um, so yeah, I remember when I first learned that there was a country that spoke English in Africa, I was confused. Uh, this is so, South Africa's language is weird. Um, our business language is English and you would be able to get by in English literally everywhere in South Africa. So I don't think there's a single person that can't speak English in South Africa or at least understand it, right? So if you speak to them, they'll be able to give you whatever the fuck you want. Uh, but it's not our official language. Uh, we have 11 of those. So you sort of have to pick and choose which one of the languages you, you want to go with uh, in terms of the official language system of South Africa. Um, has there been any updates on the new release date for the Grimoire of the Shadowlands book? Mokachul, the problem is that everyone seems to have a different fucking release date. <laughs> So, yeah, who knows? Hero Effect, how you doing? Um, this is really true. I'm from Eastern Europe, and my grandparents always praise how good socialism was. Uh, Dio, you, you would be one of the few people. Uh, of I'm, I know a crazy amount of Eastern Europeans, and none of them want it. None of them want it. So I would say there's always going to be outliers, right? Uh, the friends of Vladimir Lenin and Stalin loved communism because they didn't starve, right? Um, it was the other people that, that didn't have it so well, right? So there's always going to be outliers, people that, that form part. So I watched this documentary, uh, I think two days ago, where, um, I don't know, does anyone here know who Michael Malice is? Uh, is your own language Afrikaans? I mean, your main language. Yes, my home language is Afrikaans. Um, does anyone know who Michael Malice is? All right, he's not for the faint of heart. If you if you don't like trolls, and you don't like someone that um, if you if you don't like trolls and you don't like someone that says so he's like, he's got like a very dark sense of humor. Uh, he was born in uh, Soviet Russia. Uh, his parents escaped when he was very little. You know, at the threat under the threat of death. So this guy's sort of humor was shaped by this. But he wrote a book, the unofficial biography of uh, King, Yong, uh, King Kim Yong Il, right? Uh, which is it's it's titled Dear Reader. He went to North Korea and he learnt everything there is to know about North Korea. If you speak to the people that live in uh, what's the capital city of fucking North Korea? Point. Po I always struggle to fucking pronounce his name. Point Yang, right? Or, or some shit like that. Um, a lot of them don't dislike the communism that they have in North Korea because they, they're living a good life. They're being taken care of by the government. They have food. They have clothes. They, they think that they're very hip-hop and happening. So they don't dislike North Korea. The, the people that dislike it are the people on the farms, right? They're the ones that get complete and, completely and utterly fucked by the government. Um... So there's always going to be a, a subset of people that don't mind these systems because the systems work in their favor. 
Uh, funnily enough, it's always the scumbags that reach the top in these systems. I'm not saying that, uh, Dio, I'm not saying that your grandparents were scumbags. I'm saying the people that go to the top in these systems are not the people that like it. The people that reach sort of the government levels are always the scumbags, right? It's those people that, that effectively fuck the system. Uh, Mickey Mouto, how are you doing? Sorry, not sorry, but some people love being told what to do. There was um, a newsreader. I can't remember his name, but he, he was a, a, a big newsreader in the 60s who had this famous line that said, the average American does not wish, wish to be free. They simply wish to be safe. When you, and then there's the line from, I believe it was Washington, but it may actually have been someone else. No, I don't think it was Washington. It was one of the congressmen from Kentucky, I think. Um, no, who said it? Hold up, I need to fucking Google this. Wait a second. Um, uh, those who exchange... All right, hold up. Uh, ben Franklin. Ben Franklin. Okay, so Ben Franklin used to say, those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserves neither liberty nor safety. Right? Ben Franklin said this. There was a senator from Kentucky during the, the, the forming of the Constitution that said... Um, that said, give me liberty or give me death, right? Uh, this was when they were sort of arguing about whether or not America should become a democracy, whether or not it should become a, sort of a socialist communist kingship, or whether it should become a constitutional republic, right? And this man from Kentucky stood up and he said, if you implement democracy, we go to war, right? The, this, this governor stood up in the chambers of the Constitution, uh, where the Constitution was written, and he said, if you implement democracy, we go to war tomorrow. And then he explained, if you have democracy, the big states will be able to tell us, the little states, what to do, and we will have no freedom to live our lives the way that we choose. So, no, we do not want dem democracy. And so this is where he uttered the lines, give me freedom or give me death. Um, so, you know, uh, sort of an interesting line when you start thinking about, especially the recent times that we've lived in, the last year and a half that we've lived in. And then I read the line to you again. Those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary free safety deserves neither liberty nor safety. And you do sort of imagine the last year and a half and imagine what people were able to give up uh, willingly in order to purchase a little bit of temporary safety. My grandparents were farmers in the 1960s and they liked the way of socialism because they had always something to do. On the other side, they had no clue about how much debt was made during that time period by the state. It was in Hungary, I guess. We had a soft socialism. The problem is that socialism only works so, far, so long as you have other people's money, right? James, how are you doing? In the arms, freedom is for adults. Uh, well, four people got shot by cops here on a peaceful protest for water. Alodi, where was that? That's the way it's going, since they are trying to take out the electoral college. You can then see the source of our problems is the people in majority are acting like babies. Liberty, capitalism, gay rights, freedom of religion, and atheism. Both sides step on liberty, especially the Donald crowd. Donald also wanted to ban tech companies. He's the biggest communist we've ever had. Um... While I do not agree with the fact that he wanted to ban tech companies, I do think there needs to be a discussion about what tech companies are, right? Um, I would actually say that saying that his crowd is the biggest steppers on liberty is wrong, because I don't think, I think the Republicans and the Democrats have no time for liberty. Either one of those parties would be happy to take all your liberty, which is why I'm an anarchist, which is why I think burn the whole fucking system down, right? Because I don't like any of them. Um, not even to talk about my country. <laughs> uh, but we do need to have a discussion at some point about big tech. Because 
there is an argument to be made, a very real argument to be made, that the new public square is big tech, right? The new public square is big, big tech. And so then you have to have the argument, should freedom of speech be absolute on, on big tech websites? Should you be allowed to say whatever the fuck? Should the First Amendment extend to big tech websites uh, and big tech platforms? Um, since those have become the new public square, right? Now, again, you're getting into a lot of problems with with that argument because these are businesses, they're private companies, they, they should not be forced to adhere to anyone. But, you know, they are private companies, yes. Uh, although there is a, a couple of issues with them being private companies in that... So, people like to use the line, if you don't like it, build your own. How many people here immediately think that whenever you hear people complain about big tech and how they're censoring people's free speech how many people immediately think well if you don't like it build your own this is usually an argument that comes from the libertarian side as well as from the left uh the left often makes this argument if you don't like it build your own is there anyone in chat that believes that Bikarko, we're going big dick today 100 percent So it would be fine to build your own if they would actually allow it. But if you look at every company that has tried to build their own, uh, they get shut down immediately. Like all of the internet service providers just immediately go, no, get the fuck off our thing, right? You're not allowed to use Amazon servers. You're not allowed to use Google servers. You can't use our websites. You can't use our browsing services. So how do you build your own if you don't like it build your own but then we're also going to make it so that you can't build your own so in that sense you're then saying wait a second are you really private companies or have you just uh have you just become censors right uh ensuring that no one else can actually do it well boy the problem with build your own google is you're literally now going uh well if you don't like america just build your own america how the fuck are you supposed to do there is but one america right you can't build one right next to it uh it just doesn't work right so there is sadly an argument that probably should be had am i smart enough to figure this out no so i don't think uh, i don't think i should uh, i because uh, i would probably not have the right answers for this um actually i would not have the, the right answers for anything uh, can i just say before we get into any ranting let me let me say this for everyone in chat i am always open to debate i am always open to discussion and the reason i'm always open to debate and discussion is because um i'm a fat cunt sitting in my bedroom talking about video games my opinions are not facts my opinions are not uh solid because i most of the time just don't know so if you are taking anything i say as advice or as the word of god you're, you're a fucking moron you should not be listening to me about anything uh specifically when it comes to politics uh, i would argue that you should listen to no one when it comes to politics but to yourself you should figure out what it is that you believe and then believe that uh unless new evidence emerges that sort of changes your mind right um but you should definitely not look to me for guidance i cannot give you that unless of course you are like me and you believe that the system should be burnt down in which case we're on the same side <laughs> uh otherwise you know do whatever um if south africa if living in south africa have taught me anything it is that democracy is simply legal dictatorships like you guys know this sort of saying that, that people have where they go um democracy isn't perfect but it's the best we have and i always think to myself that is the most bullshit line ever because democracy is not even not perfect democracy is literally a dictatorship the only difference is you get to vote for your dictator and if you don't believe that it's a dictatorship, I, I give you guys a challenge today. And chat, you can tell me what would happen to you if you did this. 
If you do not believe that you're living in a dictatorship, do the following for me. When next you fill out your tax forms, don't. Just don't. It's not a dictatorship, right? You have a choice. You can choose whether or not you want to live in a country, whether or not you want to pay for the things that they do. So if it is not a dictatorship, uh, don't pay your taxes. Let's see how that goes. W what, what's going to happen if you don't pay your taxes? Take a guess, anyone. The government very quickly shows you just how much of a dictatorship they are. They come with their guns and they take the money. That is a dictatorship. When you do not do what daddy government tells you, it comes with it gun, its guns and it gently reminds you that it might be the best thing for your health to, go, to do as they say. Democracy is, is fucking evil. It's, it's not that it's the best we have. It's the most evil system we have. Because democracy is the only system where 50% of the world is constantly living under a government that they did not choose. Right? Of course, countries like North Korea sort of pushes the needle a bit past 50% because no one there lives under the government that they chose. Um, so, yeah, I, I personally do not like capitalism. I think it has too many flaws and I don't think it's con conducive to human, uh, to human happiness. But can I ask, is there anyone with any specific questions about South Africa? Like before I get into a general rant, is there anyone that has any specific questions about South Africa? Um, but isn't that true for a lot of things? I can choose to shoot my neighbor and they will come for me with guns. Uh, James, but remember, if you choose to shoot your neighbor, you have taken your freedom and pushed it down your neighbor's throat, which you're not allowed to do. However, your money is your money to do with as you please. If you do not want to give your money to the government to waste, you should absolutely be allowed not to give your money to the government to waste. Because you're not taking anyone else's freedom, right? If I don't pay my taxes, no one else is losing anything. I'm just saying, look, I don't like the fact that you're wasting my money on, on wars. I don't want it, right? So I'm not paying. If you want to keep going to war and you want to keep wasting my money on bullshit, I don't, I'm not paying. And you're not taking anyone else's freedom. You're not infringing on everyone else's rights. You're just, you're just deciding that my money will not be wasted on your bullshit. And yet they'll still come with guns. In fact, one might argue that you'd be better off shooting your neighbor in terms of what's going to happen to you than not paying your taxes, right? The government makes a far bigger deal of you not paying your taxes than you shooting your neighbor. Don't shoot your neighbor. <laughs> if, in case that wasn't fucking obvious, I'm not saying, yeah, just go do whatever the fuck. Don't shoot your neighbor. I'm just saying in a, in a perfect world, uh, the one would carry far more uh like bad shit happening than the other and yet doesn't seem to be the case um all right so sorry major problems in africa is that the anc will never not be the leading government this is true yes is there any better system you know of girl the problem is what you mean by better uh is there a system that's going to fix all of the problems in the world no and anyone that sells you that system is a fucking liar right Anyone that comes to you, the, so usually where I stop listening is when someone uses the words or even phrase that relies or that leads to it, utopia, right? No. No, 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 no. There is no such thing. When you're dealing with human beings, you cannot have utopia. Human beings are fucking crazy right we will always find a way to fuck up utopia so utopia is not possible in a human civilization the closest you can get to utopia is to allow people to choose their own happiness right it's to allow people to wherever possible choose their own happiness and as long as their happiness or their choices does not interfere with the happiness of others they should be allowed to do so right uh, in a complete free um society so there therein lies the argument now what is the best now for libertarians and i see there's a few libertarians in the chat here 
For libertarians, that answer lies in a very strict uh, constitution with a very small government, right? So the argument for a libertarian is that you need a government that does a couple of things. Um, the government should take care of the military. However, the constitution of the country must only allow for the military to defend the country against invaders. It's not allowed to attack another country, right? So it's a defensive force and only a defensive force. Um, and then some libertarians argue for a police force. Others say no. Uh, the police force should be private, although I would say the general theory of libertarianism is that any system of force should not be in the private sector. So the general libertarian argument is that the police is a, is a vehicle of force and therefore it should belong to the government so that private individuals do not have the ability to exercise force on anyone else, right? Apart from that, the libertarians say government may involve itself in nothing else. And for a long time, this is what I adhere to. Now, I just want to be very clear on something here. Um, the vast majority of libertarians love to call themselves Ayn Randians or believe that their theory is based on the theory of Ayn Rand, which is not true. Uh, Ayn Rand is an objectivist, which is not the same as a libertarian. While libertarians borrow uh, quite a few things from Ayn Rand, they are not Ayn Randians. The theory of Ayn Rand is very different to the theory of um, of libertarians, okay? Now, um, I am not a libertarian anymore. I used to be one. But I guess, um, I guess in order to explain this, let's go back to my early days. So where did I start? I started as a... As a as an extreme conservative, right? I, I was brought up in a very conservative household. Um, I, 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 I was basically inducted into conservatism from a very young age. I then left and I, I, I went to England for two years, uh, in which case I saw a bunch of things that did not make a lot of sense to me, right? A, a bunch of things that conflicted with my conservative viewpoint that I could not marry to the promises that conservatism made, but then these things are not that bad, right? And so uh, after England, I, I went to study for uh, four years uh, and I studied drama and singing. Now, anyone that thinks that universities is a breeding ground for socialism and, and communism, you've never studied drama and singing. Uh, socialism and communism is basically, it's like the religion on those campuses. So I became, uh, and not because I'm falling from one side to the other, I had very strong beliefs in my conservatism, reasons for believing in conservatism. The first cracks came from obvious evidence to the contrary, which I could not marry with the ideas from conservatism that I believed in. And then there were there were a bunch of socialist ideas that that sort of really rung true with me, right? Uh, so, for example, I will say this: I do not. Um, I think that Karl Marx is is one of the most unintelligent human beings on the planet, and I think anyone that reads Karl Marx and believes that this guy is an academic is is a moron first and foremost, and your education has left you. With, with little to no rationality whatsoever. There's nothing within Karl Marx. Uh, Karl Marx, yada yada, is all the most important parts of, of his philosophy. So Karl Marx, first and foremost, most atheists believe in Karl Marx, and yet Karl Marx's utopia is based on the Garden of Eden. Like his entire philosophy is a Christian philosophy. Uh, so it's sort of weird uh, that people can't marry the two. Um, Karl Marx says that there's going to be... Uh, uh, there, there's going to be a dictatorship, right? For a while, there's going to be a dictator and you sort of have to kill people in order to get to your, your utopia. And then he goes, and then there's going to be utopia. And then when you ask, but Carl, how do we get from this maniac killing people to the, uh, to the utopia? He goes, no. Next question. 
He fucking yada yadas the, the whole important bit of going from the dictatorship. That, that's like there's no plan for going from killing, killing, killing to utopia, utopia, utopia. It's just a yada yada bullshit, right? So there's nothing within Karl Marx. However, Karl Marx had a couple of very interesting observations, things that I absolutely to this day agree with. The capitalism that Karl Marx described does not work. And Karl Marx did not even realize at the time, this is why I think Karl Marx is an unintelligent human being and why people should absolutely not listen to him. Karl Marx did, didn't even describe capitalism correctly. What he described was corporatism. What he described was when the government and business get into bed together, which is literally what you're not allowed to do under capitalism. But I agree with Karl Marx 100%. The capitalism that we have in the 21st century does not work. When the government and business gets into bed together, it is the people that suffer. 100% every single time. Whenever the government passes a law, you have to know that that law is not for you. It's a law for the rich fucks upstairs. When the government comes out and it says that it's going to increase worker fucking um, uh, handouts, the reason they're doing that is so that companies like Amazon can get away with underpaying their employees. Because guess what? I think it's something like 70% of all Amazon employees are on government benefits. Why can, why, why can Amazon get away with that? Because they're government benefits. So they, they know they don't have to give a fuck, right? They, they, they don't have to care. When government passes laws, it's not for you or me, it's for the rich cunts. This is why government may not be in power with, the, uh, with businesses. This is why there should be no link between business and government. Um, and I agree with Karl Marx on that point, right? The businesses of today, the government, the capitalism that we have today is not a workable system and it should fall. The question is, how do you replace it? Now, Karl Marx says more of the same which has always fucking baffled the mind, right? Th the government is why we are where we are, but we need more government. That's like saying, in order to put out this fire, we need more fuel. This is literally like saying, just throw more petrol on the fucking fire. You, you guys know when the ocean was on fire not too long ago? That would be the equivalent of getting tanker, oil tankers, to fucking, fucking spray oil on the fire and go, I don't get why this isn't dying. <laughs> right? The fire is just getting like, the, the ocean is starting to evaporate because of this fire. And everyone's just sort of going, why is this not dying? What the fuck's going on? If you say that you have a problem with the current system, the answer should not be more government. Government is why we're here. The, the answer should be less government. Now, in order to answer your question that you asked almost 10 minutes ago, and I do apologize for the rant, um, the perfect system doesn't exist. Human beings cannot make a perfect system because we ourselves are not perfect. However, there is a system that gives people the vast majority or the most freedom possible without interfering with people's freedoms, unless your freedoms start to interfere with others. Now, in this case, like I said, you can either go the, li the libertarian route, which has a government, or you can go my route, which says no government, right? So the reason I say no government is because I don't think even if you have a small libertarian government in 200 years from now, that government is going to be as big as the United States government. Because I think, I think that government, first and foremost, is the enemy of the people, right? I, I genuinely believe this. Government is the enemy of the people and they should be regarded as such. Whenever you see the government, you should not look at them with admiration. You should look at them with distrust and disdain because that's what they are. Every politician in government right now is there because they could not make in the real world. And I challenge you to show me anyone else. I challenge you to show me a politician that would have made it in the real world, that would have been able to start a company and, you know, rise to power with his company and become one of the biggest companies on earth. He wouldn't be able to do it because that's not who he is. He's not a businessman. He's a fucking politician, right? 
That's all he does. They're failures. They're human scum. And yet people look at them as if they're the second coming and say, I don't, I don't get it. These stupid fucks are going to control us, are going to tell us what's good. And I'll ask the question again that I've asked so many times before. How many of you look to your leader and think to yourself, now there's the smartest man in the room or woman in the room? How many of you actually look at your leaders and go, now that is a smart cookie? So why are they fucking running us? Why are they running us? This is the question you need to ask yourself. Why is it that the stupidest people in the room manage to fucking get to the top of the power list? Because that's what government is. It's where all the sociopaths and psychopaths con congregate. You see, because there they can kill people legally. There they can fuck people up legally. Um... Government is filled with the stupidest people in the room. Um, and it's it's always funny to me whenever people go, oh, you know, he's just a politician. They lie. What are you going to do? It's like, what are you talking about? Like, how's that okay? How's that okay? How's it okay that this man may lie because he's a fucking politician? Now, in order to understand why I'm ranting the way that I am, allow me to explain. I, allow me to take you all now, I want you guys to close your eyes and imagine this for a second, right? I'm going to take you on a journey. The journey that we're going on today is life in South Africa in 2021, right? It's, it's a wonderful story filled with loss and, and sadness and, and heartbreak. Um, I wish I could say happiness, very little of that. Um, like it, it's a genuine tragedy, like a Shakespearean tragedy. Um, without a, a deuce ex machina sort of ending um but I, I want you all to come with me on this journey as we go through it now we'll we'll start our journey two and a half days ago i could go further back but you know that would sort of annoy a lot of you because we'd have to go through about 20 26 years of history in order to understand exactly how we got to this point but two and a half days ago, it was nine o'clock on a Saturday. Um, and I'm suddenly reminded of a, song, of a song that I'm not allowed to sing because I'd get uh, copyright strike. But it was actually nine o'clock on a Saturday. Um, and suddenly the lights in my house start flickering. I mean, genuinely flickering. And my, my AC is sort of dying down it, it it has these depths it, it sounds like something is going completely fucking wrong um my pc screen is also sort of dipping things wrong something's not quite right with the house my brother comes in and he's like what the fuck's going on why why is this happening and i'm like i don't know uh, i i genuinely don't know i i sort of turned on the ac i turned off the ac because i thought maybe the ac is fucking off even though it's a brand new ac Maybe that's pulling too much power, but that didn't change anything. So I walked downstairs to look at the DB board to see if I can see something wrong. And suddenly, it's as if I went blind. Like, just suddenly I'm blind. It's like fucking darkness, pitch black darkness. And a sound that accompanies this sudden darkness, like a fucking explosion, like <laughs> fucking explosion. And I'm like, yep. My first, my first thought was the looters had blown something up. They're coming, right? That, that's like my first thought. I'm like, here comes the looters. So, you know, we're getting the guns. We're getting ready. It's, it's fucking war, right? Um, then we hear sirens, but these are sirens. Uh, now, I live in Pretoria, under us. So, uh, these, they're sirens, sirens going, and these are clearly not police sirens. So... Immediately, I thought to myself, okay, so it's not, I mean, you would have heard police sirens. If if anything, there should have been police sirens. Uh, these are fire trucks, right, going. And I thought, okay, I'm not hearing police sirens. I am hearing fire trucks going. Um, so we wait. 
Nothing's happened. Still fucking pitch black. Nothing's going on. All right. So we wait. We wait. We wait. I go on Twitter because I still have battery on my phone left. I go on Twitter and I'm like, uh, go, I'm trying to look for it, for any information, right? So I'm on my, my municipality's Twitter page and I'm waiting for information to come through. I start clicking on some of the old posts that they have there and suddenly I start seeing information coming through um, photos from people of the substation just blew the fuck up, right? The substation blew up in 2018. Now, in order to explain this, you have to understand something. I believe it was 2015. They started to build a brand new substation. Brand new, fucking perfect, cost the country millions of, of rands, right? Uh, I believe the, the total cost of the entire substation came on to something like, in terms of dollars, $8 million for the substation. The substation, they cut so many corners in order to save money so that they could sort of pocket all of the excess uh, that as soon as it was finished, I believe a year after it was finished, it blew the fuck up. Like the entire substation blew up. In 2018, the people living in my area was without electricity for two weeks as they were rerouting power to existing substations. Now, one of the substations that all of this power was rerouted to is called the Vapat Rant substation. This substation is completely and utterly overused. There, there's too many neighborhoods and suburbs pulling electricity from this singular substation. So it breaks every two months. Most of you that's been on the stream for a while will know exactly what I'm talking about. Every two months, the substation blows the fuck up, right? Um, like, it doesn't blow up like it did now. It, it just sort of it, it melts. It's like a, 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 one, a 134 kilowatt board. They call it something. I can't remember the name of it. But it's like a board, and those boards blow up, and then they have to fucking replace them. It's like every two, every two fucking months, this happens. All right, this time around, it's obviously a lot bigger. Uh, we keep getting video, keep getting footage of this place burning and they're struggling to get the, the fire under control. They finally get the, 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 the fire under control and um, now comes the lies. Now, in order to understand why I hate these lies is because there are no other options in this country. My entire electrical grid is supplied by the government. All electricity is supplied by the government. The government has a government mandated monopoly on the supply of electricity. In other words, there is no one else that you can go to for electricity. So, um, they come out on Sunday evening. So now this is a whole day of not getting much information on what the fuck's going on. They finally told us, hey, you know, there's been an explosion, but they still don't know the cause of it. But listen to this, right? They don't know the cause of the explosion. They do know that it wasn't a lack of maintenance. And I thought to myself, if, if you don't know the cause, then you don't know the fucking cause. How can you with certainty say, we don't know what blew this up, but it was definitely not our fault. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Until such time that you can show me that someone threw a hand grenade into the substation, it's your fucking fault, bro. It's the most likely fucking explanation. These things shouldn't blow up, right? If they blow up, someone is to blame for it, and you can't say, it's not us. That we know for certain. Anyways, they've never actually come out to this day now. It's now two and a half days later. We have electricity. They still have not come out to tell us what the fuck caused the explosion right? That's not been told to us yet. Anyways, it gets better. So finally on Sunday evening, the man steps out and he's like, right, we have finished cleaning up the site. We are now installing new panels. We've already sourced all of the panels. The panels are already here. We're installing them now. We should, in the early hours of the morning, start with pressure testing. Now, pressure testing, they do it takes about three, four hours to do the pressure test, and then they start switching on all of the neighborhoods, right? This is how they do it. I thought to myself, fuck, these guys are quick. Usually we wait 48 hours for just a normal fucking board that, that blew. 
this thing was an explosion and they've done it almost fucking immediately right so quick uh monday morning comes and uh, around about 8 a.m we get a message uh there was some unforeseen con some unforeseen circumstances right as there always is you you know how this goes right uh, but they are now starting with uh, installation. Last night, he told us that they had already done installation, right? They were finishing up installation, and then they'll start with pressure testing. The morning, we are... No, no. Now they're starting installation. Right, no problem, okay? So somehow, th maybe they decided, fuck it. We're just going to uninstall everything again and just restart, right? They, they sort of did that for fun or whatever. Um, 2 p.m., we get another update from the motherfucker. Uh, this time, there's been more unforeseen circumstances, right? However, they have now managed to install all of the panels and... Um, they're just doing some last minute cable testing. Okay, no problem. We'll wait. Um, so the stuff's now installed. The pressure testing should start as soon as the cable testing has been done. 6 p.m. This is yesterday. 6 p.m. There is another notification, another update. The update tells us that everything's been installed. Everything's been done. Within the next three hours, pressure testing will be done and all neighborhoods except for two will be connected before the end of the night right my power came on at 3 a.m there's still neighborhoods that don't have their power last night at about 11 p.m is when i knew that my power is not coming on anytime soon is when one of the technicians that work on the site sent a whatsapp to his girlfriend right telling her that he's not going to be able to come home because last night at 11 p.m. they had just finished the installation of the panels. When were we told that installation was done? 2 p.m. the previous fucking day. At 11 p.m. the installation was just finished. So now they're starting pressure tests. There's two neighborhoods that's not on the list. Their power is still off, by the way. The one is Olympus and the other one is Fairy Glen. Fairy Glen is one of the biggest neighborhoods in Pretoria. Olympus is one of the newest neighborhoods in Pretoria, and it's also a pretty big business neighborhood. Guess when their power is coming back online? Earliest that their power will be back online. Luckily, well, next week is, is a viable thing. No, the earliest, the earliest that they will have power again is Wednesday evening. That's the earliest according to their estimations. And they did actually say in brackets, if nothing goes wrong. Earliest is Wednesday evening. Now, you guys have to imagine this. Pretoria is currently struggling through the biggest... Um, cold front that i think we've ever had i mean it was at 2 p.m today it was 17 degrees celsius at 2 p.m today 2 p.m is when it's the hottest and usually in winter time you're looking in south africa anywhere from 21 to 23 degrees celsius right uh thereabouts usually uh during during the day it's 17 degrees celsius during the day during the height of what would be the warmest time of our day the evenings go very cold very quickly these are neighborhoods that we will be without hot showers no hot water no ability to cook food no ability to turn on heating nothing until wednesday the government we apologize for the inconvenience it's like, huh? You apologize for fucking what now? Now, you might be asking Akalon, but at the beginning of this story, when we 
went on this fantastic journey, this fictional journey of South Africa, because as I'm assuming as most of you hear this, you go, surely this is not a country. Surely what Akulon is talking about here is some kind of fantasy world, so believe that if you will. Um, but the beginning of the story, I told you that the actual substation blew up because they took shortcuts, and now we were all sort of, sort of rerouted to other substations in the, in, in the meantime. So the insurance company that was supposed to pay out for the explosion of the original substation, they, they took two years to pay out. The reason they took so long is, in my opinion, my estimation, I'm not saying this is true, but the reason, because normally in South Africa, they don't take that long, right? Most insurance companies, when you claim next week, week after that, you'll, you'll have your claim paid out. The reason they took this long, I'm almost certain of it, is the insurance company is not happy having to pay out money for a substation that was not built to scale, was not built correctly. So they're basically having to pay money for mistakes that was made by other people. So I know there was a massive court case and there was all sorts of shit that happened. And I don't think, I think it's actually the insurance company of the boulders that had to pay. So it was a massive fucking story, right? Um, they paid out last year, November, 2020. Now my government in their infinite fucking wisdom, and this is why I hate the government as much as I do. There is a regulation in South Africa that states that you are not under any circumstances allowed to start a new project in the middle of a financial year. So they're not allowed to use the money that was paid out November 2020 to start rebuilding the new fucking substation until July of this year when the next financial year starts because it's illegal. So you made the fuck up, right? You fucked up. Because of your malmanagement and mismanagement, we are without power every two months for at least two days. And yet, we also get fucked over because you, because of a regulation that makes no fucking sense whatsoever. Because what, what does that regulation serve? The money was paid out by the insurance company for a brand new fucking substation. Then use the money that's now in your bank account to pay for the substation. That's literally why the money was paid out. No. Just no. We don't do that. Not 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 here. You'll wait. You'll wait another eight months, nine months, and then you can start your fucking plans. They couldn't even start with sort of tender processes. So they couldn't even get companies so long to get the project and start planning for the project. They're only allowed to get people for the project July. And it's like, well, what the fuck's the point? And then, of course, their next line, after they told us that that's what they're going to be doing, is um, they believe that the next substation will be ready in 18 months. Will it fuck? Will it fuck? In South Africa... 18 months for a project this big? <laughs> Five years at the minimum, if you ask me. James, this is my country. My country have regulations on top. So most of you have told me, Akalon, just move out of South Africa, right? So there's a couple of things that I, I, I think a lot of people don't understand about the ability to move out of South Africa. So if you live in Europe or you live in the US, you, you would know none of this, right? Even Canada, for that matter. You, you would know none of this. Because in both Europe and the US, in NA, you guys have what is called Tier 1 passports, right? You have Tier 1 passports, which means you can basically go anywhere in the world, right? Most countries in the world you don't even need a visa for. And those that you do need a visa for, you get very easily. South Africa, I believe, is tier two or tier three passports. This means that we have a very limited amount of countries that we can actually go to. And of the countries that we can actually go to, we need quite a lot of, uh, like a massive visa in order to get in to stay. So for me to actually stay in any of the first world countries in the world is very difficult. Now, there's a couple of exceptions to this, right? 
So I could, for example, move to one of the Asian countries. Um, and as long as I take a class, a course in language, so let's say, for example, I, mo I move to Thailand, right? I could take a, a Thai course and then I could be there on a student visa, right? Uh, this would not count in the West. Uh, most Western nations, like I can't go to Germany and just take a course on German and say I'm a student. Uh, this would not qualify as being a student in Germany. So there's, there's a couple of issues there. But there's even bigger issues. So for South Africans, there's about two easy ways to leave the country. Very easy ways. One very hard way, but also easy if you can actually manage it. The first very easy way is marriage, right? Marriage is the simplest way. You find a wife, you get married, you move, right? It's simple as that. Uh, the second way is sponsorship, right? So you get someone in the host country that you want to move to to sponsor you. The marriage one is one that I would never use, right? Because I don't... Well, I... I this might be old-fashioned, but I have sort of very high standards when it comes to marriage, and I still actually believe that marriage means something, and so I I, I refuse, right? I, I don't think that marriage should ever be used as, as, as a bargaining chip to get into a different country. Um, the sponsorship one, I would specifically never use. Like, that, that is even more and more not use, right? Because that's just dangerous. Sponsorship is a very dangerous thing that no one should ever engage in unless it's like for a family member, right? So um, where you want to go? We set up a sponsor. We got your back. Uh, Hilda, Hida, so the reason I would never go with a sponsorship for any uh, country is if you know what sponsorship entails, you would probably never offer and I would never accept. So if you, for example, let's say you went and you said, okay, Akalon, I'm going to sponsor you, right? You can come to the US, I'll be your sponsor. If, let's say tomorrow, YouTube, something happens and I stop making money. My welfare is now your fucking problem. You now have to pay my rent. You now have to buy my food. You have to pay my health care. You are the one who sponsored me. In other words, if I can't afford to live, you have to pay my way, right? That is disgusting. I would never expect that of anyone. I would feel very weird even trying to fucking take that. So definitely sponsor is out of the, uh, out of the question. Marriage is out of the question. The other one, which is uh, easier, but not easy, <laughs> even though they they love to write how this is the easy option. Um, but the easier option is to invest a million dollars. So if I had a million dollars, I could move to the US tomorrow on an investment visa and that's it, right? Um, I don't know why all newspapers and magazines in South Africa go, this is the easiest option. I'm like, how is getting a million dollars an easy fucking option? Like... There's literally nothing easy about that option. It's a very fucking hard option. I don't know how anyone would get a million dollars, right? Um, not just, no one has that shit lying around, right? But that's sort of the easiest way, because that's Insta Visa, right? That's literally, you walk into the country with your million dollars and the government goes, sure, you can stay. Um, so that's sort of the easier option, I suppose. But then there comes a lot of other issues, right, that makes it even harder for South Africans to get out. So in most countries in the world, at least the ones that I know of, if you move, so if you're an American and you move to England, for example, right? You stop paying taxes in America and you start paying taxes in England. Am I correct in saying that? That's at least how I understand it. I'm one, but I'm pretty sure America and the UK have a tax treaty. I'm pretty sure you, um, I'm one, but you need to go check that, but I'm pretty sure there is a tax treaty. So if you move from the US to the UK, you, um, you don't have to pay taxes in both. You pay taxes in one of the two. I think you can choose which one, but you, uh, you, you don't pay taxes in both. 
South Africa doesn't have that with anyone. You pay, you pay taxes to South Africa regardless. If you want to stop paying taxes, you have to fully emancipate yourself from South Africa, in which case you have to tell South Africa that you are never coming back, which oftentimes also involves giving up your passport for South Africa. Um, so even if you have dual citizenship, they'll say, no, you still owe us taxes, which is fucking disgusting. If you think about it, that, that is absolutely disgusting. The whole point of taxes is that you pay for the shit that you use. If I'm not living in your country, then surely I don't owe you shit. There's always a risk, yes. There's always a risk. Um, if you move to Austria, I don't think Austria would take me, and I couldn't agree more. Can he ask? Taxation is theft. I moved to the UK a few years ago. I had to pay US taxes still. Only way to not pay would be to renounce citizenship. That's weird. Because I actually, just the other day, I read about the, the tax treaty between the UK and the US. James, you should actually contact your, uh, your um, what's it fucking called? Um, you should call your bookkeeper accountant accountant that's that's the english word because i think you can you can claim back on one of the two um so if for example because technically you're not allowed to be double taxed right technically you can't pay taxes twice if you if you pay taxes once you should not be forced to pay taxes again of course south africa have changed the rules now so that everyone can fucking be be taxed how can anyone not have an accountant Huh? How would you how would you know how much tax you have to pay if you don't have an accountant? Jesus, no, South Africa's tax laws are way too difficult to understand yourself. You go to an accountant, you get that shit done, cost me like thirty dollars a month, and um the accountants do that shit for me. Only pay VAT, so we don't need accountants. T in the bay again. I, I genuinely do not know how people can live without an accountant. I, I wouldn't know where to start. Because South Africa has so many different tax laws. Uh, so many different things that you get taxed on. Um, so many things that you can either claim back on your taxes or can't claim back on your taxes, depending on what job you have or what bracket you fall in. Like, there's so many different rules. I think if you, if you, if it, like, fuck, no. Um, so we have two types here in South Africa, just to be clear. So you have chartered accountants, which are fucking stupidly expensive, right? Um, no one should ever get a chartered accountant. There's no point to a chartered accountant. And then you have what is called bookkeepers, right? They finish their studies, so they are accountants, but they never took the articles. They never did their articles. So the two years that you have to work at a chartered accountant or to become a chartered accountant, they, they never did that. So the rules in South Africa sort of set up that you, you go to a bookkeeper, right? And they do your books. They're far cheaper than chartered accountants. Um, and they just sort of do your taxes for you. Now, it used to be that they could do your taxes, but they couldn't sign off on it. So they would do your taxes. Then they would send it to a chartered accountant and the chartered accountant would sign it and then it would be sent back. But they've changed that now to where if it's an individual, a, a normal accountant can sign. But if it's a company, then you need a chartered accountant. So it's sort of like fucking weird. Um only way out is if every person says no so i've sort of been thinking about this and i'm not necessarily saying that you should um i'm not saying that people should do it but you guys realize that we fund the governments of the world if every person in the world suddenly decided fuck taxes Governments would be bankrupt before they could do anything to us. 
Like, before the government could even set the IRS on you or, you know, whatever fucking service you have, they'd be bankrupt. Uh, money printing doesn't help if you don't actually have the ability to back it. Right now, they can print money because people are still paying taxes, so they do have some backing. Um, the army won't work for free. So, so the, the problem is you're going to send people in the army to go collect taxes, but you're not going to pay them for the taxes they collect? It's not going to work, right? Giant rat guy, how you doing? Saving Raven, they can't send the whole world to jail. That's the thing. They can do it if a couple of people don't do it. But if the whole world tomorrow said, fuck you, not paying for this shit, they're done? What, they're going to throw everyone in jail? <laughs> How? Right? How are they going to do that? There's not enough jails in the world to, all, to hold all the fucking population of the human, uh, of the human race. Uh, Blue Fairy, take care of yourself. Uh, thank you much for hanging out. My favorite stream of all time. And yes, I really appreciate that. This world is a prison. Yeah, that's pretty much how I feel, bro. Also, I... This is complex. This medical is paid by government. Um, that's part of the problem. Declare martial law and take all of it and make tank jails like they have in the past. Seven Raven, they can't do that for everyone. Back in a few minutes, grabbing coffee. All right, holler enemy. See you in a bit. Um, full circle. Well done. They can do it because some of us, um, they, they can do it because some of us won't, like, not everyone will do it. But if everyone were to do it, they'd be fucked. There's nothing they can do. Like, they genuinely can't stand up to the world. This is what people need to realize. The government should be afraid of their people. Um, and they're not. Like, I always get so fucking triggered when my president stands up and goes, um, we have to keep our people safe. I'm like, our, our, our people? Who the fuck made you father of the nation, you piece of shit? Our people? What our people? I am me people. I am my own fucking person. I don't need you keeping me safe. I'll do my own fucking keeping me safe. You just shut the fuck up and don't speak. Because whenever you speak, my country goes downhill. Like I get, I get, I cringe when people go, our people. It's like, what, what are you talking about, our people? I'm not your people. Jesus. Bro, they act like kings. They act like fucking kings. I don't know how many of you remember during the, um, during the height of the pandemic, right? When we were all shut down and in our homes. How many politicians got caught in restaurants? Like, what's that fuck from California called? Um, like that guy, whoever voted for that guy, you need to have yourself checked. Like, his face, like, looking at him, he's a walking liar like everything about him screams you can't trust that guy his eyes it's close together he's like a fucking squinty bastard right he tells people you're not a go not allowed to go to restaurants the next day he's in a restaurant with his friends celebrating a birthday like people in california can't go to a fucking restaurant but he can go to a restaurant with his friends it's like bro who the fuck made you king like, who the fuck made you king? <laughs> Jesus. They should serve us. That's their duty. They should serve us. That's the point of being in government, right? You are the servant. If you think about what government is, we decided we needed government for all the jobs that we didn't want to do. So we were basically sat in a, a, like a big like fucking town hall meeting years and years and years ago. And we were going, all right, guys, we can't keep doing this. Everyone is shitting in the streets. This is fucking bullshit. We, we can't keep looking at the shit in the streets. It smells horrible. Uh, the other day I saw you actually piss right in front of your shop and I had to walk there. This is disgusting. We need someone to clean this up. And they looked around the room and they, they looked at some fucking wanker sitting there in the corner and they went, you, we're going to pay you to clean up our shit, right? 
How did we go from that to you now pay me to rule you? Like, rule what, motherfucker? You're supposed to make sure that I don't swim in my own shit. That's it. That's fucking it. That's your job. Outside of that, you have no job. You just shut the fuck up and make sure that the shit works. Right? Just make sure that the shit goes from my house to some kind of farm that I don't have to give a fuck about. Right? Outside of that, shut the fuck up. Don't rule over me. Don't start your sentences with our people safe. Go keep yourself fucking safe. I don't need you keeping me safe. Giant Ratka, I agree with you. The job is to buy a mansion without tax money. That's all they fucking do. The other problem is, how did they become celebrities? I remember... Okay, so this was actually... Um, meeting number one cancelled. You're effect nice. Who's that... Who's that fucking... The woman in Congress? She's like the minority or majority leader or some shit. Uh, who's the fucking... Who's she called? Nancy Pelosi, that one. Um, when they sort of did a video on what she has in her fridge. Who gives a fuck what she has in her fridge? I, I, I was looking at it and she was sort of showcasing, first and foremost, this fridge that no government official should be able to afford, right? Not a single fucking government official should be able to afford that fridge, right? And then she takes out ice cream that is... At least from the looks of it, not cheap ice cream. But the whole time I'm sitting there going, who gives a fuck what this old hag has in her fridge? And then uh, not too long ago, I was actually watching, uh, uh, is it called Daily Wire or something? So I watch on both sides. I don't really give a fuck, right? But I was watching the Daily Wire and they had Tate Cruz on there. And the dude sort of trying to be you know, normal. It's like trying to be human. And all I kept thinking was, I don't trust you. I don't trust you. <laughs> like you're trying to make jokes with the guys and you're having a cigar. And I'm like, how are you fucking us next? That's all I care about. How are you fucking us next? Because all politicians are those people that will smile as they line up the dildo. And you all know I'm, I'm speaking the truth here. You all know I'm speaking the truth. They will smile as they line up the dildo to fuck you. Watching what she has in her fridge? I don't know, Marcentha. I fucking genuinely don't know. If they told us not to stock up ourselves on any food, so a lot of us were mad. She had a stash. Uh, I would rather get fucked less than right now, though. <laughs> it's what they do, bro. It's all they do. They fuck us the whole time. I fuck fucking hate politics. Why am I talking about this? <sighs> I should not speak about politics because I get genuinely fucking annoyed. I get genuinely annoyed. So I personally, I, I sort of adhere to the, and I realize for a lot of the British audience, uh, they might cringe now because they, they've never actually heard all the good things that she did. But I adhere to the belief here um, of Margaret Thatcher, right? Um, the smallest and most important minority is the individual. There is no greater or more important minority on earth than the individual. There is no such thing as a society. Society is simply a collection of individuals. The individual is the only thing that requires protection. Whenever someone tells you we have to protect society, you need to know that they are fucking with you. Like at some point you're going to get fucked. You don't know how yet, but there, it's coming. Because almost always, what is good for society is not good for the individuals in society. The only thing you can ever do to basically protect the minority is to protect the individual.
And if you can protect the individual, you wouldn't need to save society. Society will be fine. Um, China side. I sort of wor wonder about China. Like, I have a bunch of questions about China that I can't necessarily answer straight up. But these are questions. So, who here in chat is, is, is scared of China? And I do not. And I want to make this very clear. If I get a bunch of fuckheads here speaking shit about Chinese people, you get blocked. Insta. If I'm saying China, I'm talking about the country and the government, not the people. There are plenty of Chinese people that are fucking amazing human beings. I would say the majority, right? Uh, so I'm talking about the government. Who here is afraid of the government of China? Because here's what bothers me about the Chinese government. We're all told that they are very evil people. And we know, of course, um, that they do a bunch of bad shit to their people. But then you look at all the countries that they've sort of, in Africa, for example, that they've been doing deals with and basically paying shit tons of money to those gov governments. They make no calls of actual government on those countries. So not a single African country that basically is owned by the Chinese government at the moment are forced to implement communism or any sort of system similar to the Chinese. None. The Chinese government seems very happy to just do business and get money. They, they don't seem interested in exporting their communist philosophy. Which is weird, because that's sort of what I've been warned about. For a long time, we were told that they want to they wanna basically export communism. But then you look at the countries that they do business with. Australia, for example, is one of their biggest business partners. Or at least China is, one, is Australia's biggest business partner. And they don't seem to force communism on Australia. Oh no, Iron Wombat, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about for the world. If we want to talk about the, the Chinese people and their suffering, that's a whole different conversation and one that I absolutely agree with. What the Chinese are doing to their people is absolutely disgusting, right? Um, because you're basically, you're they've enslaved a very large group of their population into servitude forever, right? Through their policies. Um, I'm just sort of talking about the rest of the world. Should the rest of the world truly be scared of China? I know quite a few people that love China, that's been there. <laughs> and they absolutely adore the place. Um, I've never been, nor do I think I ever want to be. And it's not because I dislike China. Um, I've just never had any interest in going there. Mainly because I don't, like, I, I am a little bit scared that you go there and then you get locked up in, in some fucking Chinese prison forever. And that, that would suck, right? Um... Although, according to my friends who's been there, uh, most of you know Germanio, right? I mean, everyone that's been at the uh, on the stream would know Germanio. Germanio was born in China. She's lived in China almost her whole life before she moved back to the UK. Um, she actually told me that police does very little there. Like, if you're a foreigner, the police doesn't want to get involved. Like they usually just take a step back. They're like, no, no. Is Japan nuts, though? Like, how bad is Japan actually? I know very little about Japan. 
Oh yeah, I think I think going to Asian countries for the historical effect would be amazing, right? Furman is teaching English in China. He's having a good time, to be honest. Could barely afford his own place here. For people, for me, everyone is the same. Uh, both here, one hundred percent agree with you. One hundred percent agree with you. I reject any arguments um, based on what's the immutable characteristics right so any argument that any human being wants to make if that argument starts on the basis of an immutable characteristic that argument is a stupid fucking argument right so i i don't care how intelligent or how intelligent you think you might be if you start an argument with something and it's based sort of on race or gender or sexual orientation I immediately dismiss your argument as fucking stupid. Because what are you talking about? <laughs> right? Uh, you, you can't make an argument uh, based on anything like that. So yeah, I'm with you there. I, I don't like... Uh, I don't like... Because if you're born a certain way, then surely that does not define you, right? The way you're born has very little, in my opinion, to do with anything. I think culture has a lot to do with it, and culture is definitely not tied to skin color. You want to know how I know that? Take a black person from America and take a black person from South Africa, and I guarantee you they're not the same. Culture is where you're born, right? It's how you grow up. It's the people that you know. Culture has far more to do with who you are as a person than is ever going to be tied to your race or your gender or your fucking sexual orientation right uh so as far as i'm concerned if you want to have an argument about different cultures and how different cultures that's that's one argument that we could absolutely have right but as soon as you make it about race i immediately go no because let's use me i'm south african right i'm south african i have european culture right? Um, a lot of my cultural exercises or practices is European, but I would probably not fit into a single European country, even though I'm white, right? I'm not technically what you would consider African, but I would not fit into any of the European countries because I'm German insofar as my family line is German, but none of my cultural traits is German. My culture is far more in influenced by Africa than it would be Germany, right? So any argument that has to do with genetics or has to do with, like I said, immutable characteristics is an argument not worth having. It's a stupid fucking argument. And as soon as you hear someone making that argument, you should just instantly go, you're a fucking moron. Um, opponent to it though, some people are more predisposed to release certain chemicals in their brain. Suffix, but the the difference there I think would be minor. Uh, I don't think it would be. I, I don't think it would be big enough to make such a big um, uh, sort of. I don't think it would be big enough to make a, a generalized argument. Um, Two percent. I don't know what the accuracy of this is, but I say some disturbing info on the Chinese real estate market. You are only allowed to rent a piece of land from the government for 100 years, and it costs two generations worth of pay just to pay off the debt, only for the 100-year cycle to restart. Jesus. I know there's... Uh, is it Mozambique in Africa that does the same thing? I, I think Mozambique has the same thing, where you, can, you can't own property... If you're a foreigner, you can't own property. You can only rent it from the government for 99 years. And then you have to sort of re-sign to rent it again. Deathlock already played. What the fuck is Deathlock? Um, all I know is Africa has them fly that bite you. Then you die months later from sleeping disease. Fuck with that. John, the, so... The good part of that is a lot of that is not in sort of suburban areas or more uh, sort of major city centers, right? Uh, yes, Africa has a bunch of weird things, right, that um, the rest of the world probably isn't used to. But in a lot of those cases, th those are insects and flies and things that is very rare. 
first and foremost, and it, it's usually not something that you'll find in, in the more metropolis areas of Africa. South Africa, for example, I think the, the worst thing we have here is um, uh, maybe malaria would, would probably be the worst thing that you can get, get from an animal here would be malaria. Um, apart from snake bites and spider bites, of course, black widows could fuck you up. But then if you're a grown man, it's going to be very difficult for a black widow to fuck you up. I would like to ask, though, um, it's fine if we talk about politics in chat, but do not take um, do not take that conversation too far. Please remember where you are. You're on Twitch, and you are having a conversation with a bunch of other people in the room as well, and not everyone necessarily wants to be part of your conversation, right? Um, so... That type of land ownership is I would say read China. the room, I suppose. They cannot own real property and can only be granted a right to use the land for 70 years by the government. But after 70 years, the government does not just take your land, it will pay you. But in some circumstances, the payment can be inadequate, but not usually. See, Zigzags, I still do not agree with that, right? Because... Private property rights is the bedrock of freedom. If you're not allowed to own your own property, you cannot truly be free, right? At least for me. In my opinion. Do you guys have running water? Purple stuff? Are you asking me? <laughs> In South Africa? Sathics, I do agree with you, by the way. But I, I think there's too many people that put too much on nature and not nearly enough on nurture. Um, that last entry was supposed to be a reply. Oh, yeah. When my wife first came to Spain from China, um, she was asking me how many years you could live in a house. She didn't even know you could own a house. The fuck? Really? Now, that's interesting. Uh, Lord, how you doing, bro? Master of Lore and Bear Jedi. I just want you to know, beside games and anything else, that I'm sad for what is happening in South Africa. I have Portuguese family there. There's a large Portuguese um, uh, sort of culture here. Um, I know almost every single corner shop in South Africa is owned by someone from Portugal, originally from Portugal. Um with your family there and unfortunately my uncle died recently but the cases of violence in your country is very concerning at least it's um what the news are selling here in portugal that you only have riots there so we do have a lot of riots right um riots is currently sort of massive although they've died down now but it does appear as if there's a group of people um there, there's a group of people right now that wishes to overthrow the government. They've basically given the government, I think, seven days or 14 days to release the previous president of the country, like the ex-president of the country, President Jacob Zuma. They've given them 14 days to release the president. Otherwise, they're going to bring the country to a standstill, according to their own words. Right. Um, so we'll see what, what my government does next. Uh, if they're going to cowtail to the um to the request or if they're going to say fuck you in which case we're probably going to get more riots um so yeah we'll we'll see how all of this plays out i'm hoping that the riots don't reach me i don't want to live like that i genuinely do not want to live like that it, it always pisses me off dude like i why now my life's going well. I have a lovely job that I fucking love. I, I enjoy what I do. Why can't everyone just chill the fuck out? Like, why can everyone not just chill out? Uh, Enoch, so good or bad one is a very difficult one to answer. Um, in order to answer this, uh, we're going to have to first discuss what do you mean when you say good 
or bad. Right? Because was Zuma... Um, so there's two... Snobby, how you doing? So there's two sides of the ANC. There's two factions within the ANC. Those who don't know, the African National Congress, they are the ruling dictators of the country, right? Um, you look like you've lost some weight. That's terrible. Have a dumpling. I think overthrowing government by force is terrible and will not work in the modern world. 300 years ago that can work, but now I think if a government is replaced by force, it is essentially just replacing a dictator with another, and probably a worse one. Zig Six, I agree with you. There's that old saying, um, I can't remember who said this, but one is only ever true once you've been liberated from your liberators. Um, let me see. Here. Truly free once you've once you've been God, can I type liberated from I want to see you say this now. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, um, I can't remember who said this, but it's someone's <coughs> someone's quote that doesn't throw it up here. But I think Nelson Mandela actually used the quote in one of his speeches. But the quote basically is that you you can only ever be free once you've been liberated from your liberators, right? Which in Africa is so very fucking true. But now back to your question, Enoch. Uh, South Africa technically have... So the ANC consists of two parts. You have the looters right which have very little ideological bend right the the looting part of the country these are sort of the liberators the strugglers um they were part of the the struggle for freedom and they believe that it is their right to enrich themselves on the back of the government right so they're corrupt they steal a lot of money they do basically whatever the fuck they want then you have the other side of the government the anc which is the socialist communist wing of the party these two groups do not like each other. They, they sort of... Uh, they tolerate one another in order to stay in power because they all get very rich off the, you know, off the back of the government, but they don't like each other. Now, Zuma was part of the looters of the ANC, right? So when he came into power, he had very little ideological bend. He could not give two fucks really about socialism or communism. He just wanted to get rich. That's it, right? And he made his friends a lot of money on the back of South Africa. Um, that's really all he, he cared about. On the other side, you have uh, Ramaphosa, who has just gotten into power, who is a socialist communist, right? So he he's less looting, more communism and socialism. Um, although he's probably for looting too. He, he just, he does have the ideological bend of socialism and communism. So if you're asking who's better for the country, neither. They're both fucked, right? So whoever gets into power, the, the losers is South Africa, right? Um, so it doesn't really matter uh, who gets into power. But I would say that the last great president that South Africa had was Tabum Beke, right? He was the president just before Jacob Zuma. Um, under him, South Africa was actually starting to do better. We were starting to pay back, back our debts. Uh, the RAND was doing very well. The country was moving forward. Um, you know, economically, the country was starting to explode. It was getting ready to really fucking go because Tabum Beke even though he was a lifelong communist, when he came into power, he said, no, communism will not work, not in South Africa. And he, he was correct. You see, the problem that South Africa has is there's too many cultures and some of those cultures are too individualistic. So Tabo Mbeki rightfully recognized that if he tried to implement communism in South Africa, he would have a war. 
right? Because there are those of us who would not uh, submit under communism. So he basically embraced capitalism and he said, okay, we'll have a capitalist sort of capitalist slash communist system, right? Where the government still does a bunch of things, but, you know, the free market will also be allowed to, to do its thing. So South Africa was doing fairly well. He got replaced by Zuma, and all of that went to shit very quickly, right? Because then he started to use the system to enrich himself and his friends. Um, what do you mean by looting? Looting in the US means destroying businesses and stealing goods. All right, so there's two types of looting, I suppose. Uh, we have looters here. We just had them last week, thanks. So these were people who went into shops and basically cleaned them out, right? Pharmacies, basically anything they could get their hands on, they stole. Um, they caused, just in about two days, they caused billions of dollars worth of damage to the economy. Um, but then we have what is called state looters, right? which is where the government loots the coffers of the country. So there's been this ongoing push in my government to take control of the, um, the, the, the central bank, right? So they want control of the South African Reserve Bank. The reason they want control of the South African Reserve Bank is because they say the bank should prioritize economic growth and uh, unemployment basically what the u.s fed is doing right now right the problem in every country in the world uh, andy how you doing where the federal government the central government have ever so every country in the world where the federal government have ever tried or the federal banks the central banks have ever tried to manage unemployment and economic growth uh, hyperinflation was the cause right so very quickly after that, because the job of a central bank essentially is to manage the currency. That's all a central bank is supposed to do. It's to ensure that your currency does not lose value. Sometimes that comes at the cost of jobs, right? Because their job is not to worry about people having jobs. Their job is to worry about a dollar being worth a dollar. Now, the problem is whenever the central bank starts worrying about people's jobs, is in order to get more people to work they tend to print money when you print money a dollar is no longer worth a dollar right and so what ends up happening is you push the currency into hyperinflation which then means that all those people that you just help employ loses their jobs anyway because the economy comes crashing down so my central bank is still privately owned and they refuse right so whenever the government goes to them and says can you lower interest rates they, they sort of go no no, we will not do that. So the government's sort of uh, limited at the minute with what they're allowed to do because the central bank refuses to sort of... So the central bank did lower rates at the beginning of last year, right? When the COVID pandemic struck, they did lower rates. And the reason they did that is because there was no economic activity. So you can't have rates at 6 7%. Or interest rates at six, seven percent with an economy that does nothing, because then very quickly you're going to start running into deflationary numbers where your your currency is losing value, but it's not actually moving anywhere, right? So they lowered it to again preserve the currency. Now there's sort of calls from the government to keep inflation that low, and they've already sort of said no, we're going to have to go up at some point because it's getting bad. Jesus. What country is this? Look at that fucking note. Is this Serbia? Fuck me, dude. Zimbabwe had like a, I think a one billion dollar note at one point, fell smoke. I think Zimbabwe had like a, a one billion dollar note at one point. So yeah, um, <laughs> for counting in that country, exactly. The problem is you can't just keep printing money. It's one of the reasons I'm so worried about the rest of the world. JCX, how you doing, bro? Um, 
Prayers for my family. My mom is at the end stage liver failure. She's been given a timeline for the end of the road. JCX, I am so sorry to hear that. Ladies and gentlemen, can we get some love and prayers and thoughts for JCX and his family and what they're going through right now? Jesse, I'm really sorry to hear that, dude. Um, and I would say I, I hope for a recovery. But even if that's not possible, hopefully not too much pain. Hopefully not too much pain. So I'm really sorry for that. Um, and thank you so much for everyone that's sending love and hearts. Um, it sucks. It, it really fucking sucks. Um... What was I going to say? I was going to say something, but I can't fucking remember now. Uh... Oh, it's one of the things that I'm worried about right now in our world is... Um... How can anyone think that all this money printing that the world is doing is not going to lead to an absolute failure of the economy. Because no one's been able to explain this to me yet. Like, governments keep printing money as if it's, like, just pieces of paper. But that's not really how it works, right? If you, if you start printing money out of nothing, the money is going to destroy itself. But yeah, I was watching this um, economist in the US that's been tracking the real CPI. Because according to the government, um, I think the last time was last week, I think, where uh, the Federal Reserve came out and they said that CPI numbers right now is 5%, 5.6%, I think. Uh, is it 5.6, 5.7? Um, I think it's like the, 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 the inflation is at 5.6, right? in the US right now. Then this economist who's been tracking since the 80s the 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 real inflation rate because in the 80s they sort of changed things. So for example, one of the ways they now calculate um inflation in the US is they look at a house owner, right? So someone who owns a home and then they says if that housing owner, if the house owner were to rent the property to himself how much would he pay this year versus how much would he pay next year, right? So that's, it used to be just the price of housing. So how much does housing prices go up every single year, right? And then because housing prices went up too fast, they said, no, no, that, that, that's not a good metric for us because that fucks up the, 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 the CPI numbers. So instead they changed it to this weird thing where if they rent the property to themselves, how much would they increase the, the rent from one year to the next? Which obviously you can think to yourself as a fucking, you could basically make up any number, right? If you really wanted to, you could just say, well, they won't move it up and then there's no movement. So this guy's basically been taking the original way of calculating inflation, the way it was done prior to 1918, 1980, and um, he's kept doing it. It shows that actual interest rates in the US right now is at 13.5%. How many of you in chat right now have felt prices going up? Like just normal prices. So I'm talking about your normal shopping cart when you go to the shops to buy food and stuff. How many of you have noticed that it's going up fucking heavily? Like you can notice that shit's getting stupidly expensive now. So what if I told you that this is just the beginning? The, this is just the beginning. So Sphinx, would you just sit there? Um, the reason incomes will not go up, right? Is first and foremost, stores are also dealing with increased prices, right? So it costs them more to to keep their stores going, right? As a result, they have less and less profit. Now, some 
of those increases in cost they can pass off to the consumer but they can't pass all of it off to the consumer because then people won't be able to buy shit so what they do is they basically move it around so a little bit goes out of their profit margin a little bit goes out of the workers and a little bit goes on to the consumer and that way you 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 basically fall into this category where one of two things goes wrong you either hit stagflation which means the economy goes nowhere and millions of people lose their jobs or you hit inflation which means the economy gets horrible and millions of people lose their jobs either way millions of people lose their jobs so those checks that you've been getting from the government don't bank them yet <laughs> you're going to need them in the very near future because shit's about to get real shit's about to get real fast um and i i don't think the vast majority of the world is aware of that buy doge i fucking wish people would stop buying doge though Um, set off the so one of the things that would probably not be such an issue is temperature rises for food production most plants do better with um with temperature rises um so as some countries might become too hot to produce certain types of food countries that were too cold to produce to produce those types of foods will now become perfect to produce those types of foods right so the one part that I'm not worried about is food production. Food production is fine. Also, we have the ability for mass scale greenhouses in case that's necessary. So food production is one of the things that I'm not too worried about with any arguments around anything, really. Um, we're talking about the economy here, right? So the economy, they, there's real world problems, of course, and people can have all the, all the real world problems that they want to have. But the economy right now is my biggest issue, right? The problem right now is my biggest issue. Because the economy, in my opinion, is the biggest threat to human prosperity in the history of the world. A lot of people are going to find out very quickly what happens when the government takes care of the people. Everyone needed to grow their own home garden. I live in New Hampshire, USA, and I'm on social security disability. I make thirteen hundred a month and my rent is nine fifty. The the list for low income housing are years long. It's ridiculous. But if the temperature keeps increasing, some land used to grow plant can be underwater. You'll change your mind when the temperature rises another two degrees globally. Considering that for the last thirty years it's remained stable and have not risen, I'll take my chances. Um <clears throat> The greed of the wealth is the biggest issue. The greed of the wealthy. I would say the greed of the government is the biggest issue. The economy is on a speed rail that's the destined. F it has to hit a brick wall, right? It fucking has to. Um, and I just want to say, Sinhalf, uh, this was not an economy. This was not a conversation about global warming. I recognize full well that based on the fact that you've shoehorned it into the discussion that this is a true threat to you and something that you really care about. And by all means, you're welcome to care about it. But this was not a conversation about that. Right? The conversation was about the economy. Global warming has nothing to do with that. At least not in the confines of this conversation. So if you want to partake in this conversation, then let's have a conversation about the economy. If you want to have a conversation about global warming, that's fine, but that's not what we're talking about now. Um, need government. It keeps them getting their votes. It's a massive gib scam. Bro, the government is a fucking skamaz. It is a skamaz. It's always been a skamaz. Is Sylvanas a libertarian? I do think so, yes. I would like to think so. Who here, uh, who here thinks Sylvanas is a libertarian? Prometheus, how you doing, brother? What is Thrall? 
Okay, wait. I'm going to ask the following. Hold up. We'll ask it like this. What is Sylvanas? One word answers only, right? So you can't, you can't go give me a whole fucking speech. I want to know what is Sylvanas from a political standpoint, right? So your options here is conservative, liberal, far right, far left, I suppose, and uh, libertarian. Go. Still a queen. <laughs> I would actually go with anarchist. If I am to put her anywhere, I would put her as an anarchist. Um, considering the fact that far left and far right is basically the same fucking thing, um, you know, uh, you could probably say she's either of those, but I don't think so. Uh, I think she's an anarchist more. All right, so from a political standpoint, what is Thrall? Tasty, how you doing, bro? <laughs> Pussy, a cock. That's not... Okay, so uh, while I realize in the political spectrum, we could absolutely call all politicians cocks, but that's not the answer we're looking for today. I would say centrist is probably a good state for him. Although I would say center left because he is a little bit more socialist, I think, than uh, center right. Right? I, I do think he's probably a little bit more socialist than he is um, uh, sort of conservative. Um, so I would definitely not. Then again, you you also get right wing socialists. So. Um, but I do think he's more status. Therefore, I would put him probably center-left. Not not too far-left, but definitely center-left. Anduin. What is Anduin? But yeah, that's funny as fuck. A failed experiment. Boy King, conservative, same as Thrall. I would also put him center left, I think. I would also put him more in the socialist center left kind, um, I think. I don't think I would put him far left. He doesn't appear to be one. Um, he's definitely not conservative. Uh, he's definitely more for change. You know who would be conservative? I think Greymane. Because Greyman is more traditional. Um, what's his face? Uh, Teralian would also probably be more conservative. Um, well, Christianity is not a political thing. So I can't really, like, Christianity wouldn't be a political answer. Um, I, I would say Greyman, uh, Teralian would be conservative. Illyria would be sort of some weird mixture of. Um, left and right i suppose because she she seems to care about tradition but then she's also not traditional right i'm trying to think about who's the who's the worst leader in yerl is a, she is a fucking fascist right yerl is a fascist um so I don't, I don't necessarily know on which side she would fall, though. I think she would fall on the communist side of things. Um, but one could make the same argument for the Nazi side of things, right? So she's either a fascist communist or a fascist Nazi, um, depending on your viewpoint, because that's literally the difference between Nazism and communism. You just change the viewpoint a little, right? right? On both sides is fascism. Um, but Yerol would definitely qualify as, I would say, fascist. Uh, on what side of the political spectrum, I'm not entirely sure. But then again, when you're far left um, and far right, your differences are usually so small, you may as well be the same, right? Um, both of you want to kill a bunch of people. You just sort of have to figure out who do you want to fucking kill. 
Um, right? That, that's basically the difference between the far left and the far right. Um, you just have to find someone that you agree should fucking die, and then they'll die. Um, Garrosh would be another example of a fascist, right? But he would be a more clear example of Nazism, right? Um, because for him, it was all about that that sort of race thing, right? The orcs, and the orcs being the, the, the one true race, and every other race should just basically worship the orcs. So he would be for, far clearer, I would say, than Yurl, because Yurl doesn't seem to be racial, but she does seem to be liked only, right? Which would be sort of fascist, but either one, right, of the two, but still fascist in a way. So Garrosh would definitely qualify more on the fascistic Nazi side of things, I think. Um, yeah, he's definitely not a communist, even though... So, it's, it's sort of difficult, right? Um... Because I, I use the word fascist, even though fascist is not actually a political leaning. Which is another thing. It's very difficult to... It's very difficult to explain, but being a fascist is not a political thing. Like, you, it, you can't have a fascistic government, right? Because fascism stands for nothing. Fascism is how you achieve something. So you can be a Nazi and be fascist, Right? And that means that you're achieving your Nazi goals through violence. Or you could be a communist and be fascist because how you achieve your communist goals is through violence. Um, so that's basically, you know, so fascist itself is not really a word. It's just, uh, it's the way in which you achieve your goal. Um, is if you use violence at any given point in time in order to achieve your goal, and that stands for people fighting what they would consider. Nazis, if you're using violence in order to stop what you consider to be bad people, you are in yourself a fascist. Um, because you're using violence and threats of bodily harm to, you know, get your way, which is literally the, the term for fascism. Um, so, Gallywix, pure capitalist, corporatist. I wouldn't say Galli Gallywix is a capitalist. Um, I would definitely say that Gallywix is what Blizzard considers to be capitalist, but that's because Blizzard, like with most things these days, Blizzard does not have a clue what capitalism is, and therefore they wrote Gallywix and the Goblins as capitalists, even though they are not, right? Um, corporatist would be a better example, I think. Um, so, yeah. The difference of far right and left are social issues, both military dictatorships. One is racist and religious, the other is atheist and globalist. Um, although I, I must say, I've made a couple of far left Christians as well, and far left other religions. So I don't think religious uh, re re religiosity is only on the side of one political spectrum. Um, and I also want to make clear, I don't think that's true religion. Um, because every real religious person I've ever met do not believe that their religion should be forced upon anyone else. They, they lead their lives in a way that they believe is the right way to live, and they usually allow other people to live how they want to live, right? Um, so I don't, I, I don't share the hatred that a lot of people have for religion, um, and Yaku was smart, but seriously, he is a genius. To be able to talk about Azeroth and Earth and draw lines between like political views of both is absolutely brilliant. Can I really appreciate that? If Venari becomes president, I, I wouldn't what call kind do you brilliant, think but... she belongs? <laughs> uh, if Venari becomes president, what kind do you think she belongs? Uh, no, Venari is definitely corporatist as well, right? Um, they're all corporatists, so you only matter to Venari if you can serve her goals. So she would definitely not be a good president to have. Um, at least as far as I'm concerned. Uh, when I seen the Grimoire of the Shadowlands had another cosmology chart in it, all I had to say was, fuck the writers. I'm so tired of them changing their fucking mind on what this fucking game is. Okay. Um...
Let's talk. Let's talk a little bit Shadowlands lore, shall we? Uh, I am done with talking about South Africa. It's pissing me off. Uh, I'd rather talk about some Shadowlands lore, if you guys don't mind. Is there anyone that's taking offense at the fact that I want to talk about normal shit, fun stuff, rather than all this horrible politics that just brings everyone down and makes everyone feel like uh, they want to scratch out their fucking eyeballs? All right, as long as everyone is okay with that, I'm happy to fucking oblige. Okay. Huh. The map of the Shadowlands, the cosmology map in the new book, is not, as it were, a retcon. And I realize why a lot of people think that, and some of it is Blizzard's fault, sure. Because when Blizzard first sort of advertised the Chronicles, they were advertising it as the word of God, so to speak. However, it became very clear from very early on, if you paid any sort of attention to the book. Now, I don't know who was first at making uh, this comparison, whether it was me or Pyromancer. I do know, however, that myself and Pyromancer very early on on one of our very first podcasts that we had. So for a while, me and Pyromancer would get together on podcasts and we would sort of talk. It was on one of our first, I think first or second podcast ever. We had a discussion about the Chronicles and we sort of both agreed that the Chronicles is not the whole truth. There, there are things that doesn't make a whole lot of sense in the Chronicles. And we were specifically talking about the creation of the Emerald Dream. In the, in the Chronicles, the Emerald Dream was at one point created by ANR. Another point, it was ANR and Elune. Another point, they arrived and the Emerald Dream was already there and ANR simply ordered it. And then in another point uh, in the book, they actually don't know who created the Emerald Dream. Uh, it was just there, right? So four different people were, uh, or four different groups were attributed with the creation of the emerald dream if this was in fact the word of god then that that makes no sense because surely god would know right the other problem that i have and and there's actually far more it, we we could go through all of it but it would take a while because there's smaller things and i would have to go read the book again because i can't remember all of them off the top of my head and i'm not reading the chronicles again um but the other thing that was very clear that this is not the word of god is the, the bit about the Shadowlands. So the entirety of the Shadowlands lore in the Chronicles is this big, right? This is a small passage like this. And it basically says, no one knows who created the Shadowlands or how old it is. All we know is that living souls go there when they die. That's it. If this was indeed the word of God, then surely um, they, they would have known, right? So that was sort of the first place, the, the first parts where myself and other speculators that were paying attention started to call this into question. And I'll never forget, at the time I was a lot smaller than Pyromancer. I'm still smaller than Pyromancer, not in real life. I'm, I'm bigger than Pyromancer in real life, like fatter, but in, on, in terms of YouTube, uh, I'm, I have a smaller community. So people weren't really paying attention to what I said, but I remember Pyromancer took a lot of flack right, for basically saying that the Chronicles is a lie, right, um, and this, there might be a lot of uh, content creators now that goes, oh, it was always, it always made sense, right, but that's not true, the vast majority of content creators made fun of Pyro for believing that, right, by extension it pissed me off because I believe the exact same thing as Pyro did, because we both reached the conclusion that the book doesn't make sense as the word of God. Um, so it was pretty clear from the beginning, if you paid attention, this book has flaws in it. So the way I view the new book, the reason the new book does not piss me off, is because the new book simply offers more pieces of the puzzle, right? That That's all the new Chronicles, Chronicles, the Grimmer of the Shadowlands is doing, right? 
it offers another piece of the puzzle from a different perspective because what we're dealing with here and what makes this so interesting is we're dealing with conflicting perspectives right we have the perspective on the side of the titans which uh, clearly is bound only to the great beyond right they, they have no ability to see into the shadowlands into the in-between they're bound in the great beyond and they're viewing the world from their perspective the great beyond and in their perspective um you know light and void seems to be the major powers but then if you view it from the side of the, the of the brokers they see a very different system to them the major powers is life and death with all of the other systems sort of all of the other powers sort of balancing between life and death right so we're getting two perspectives and the reason i like this is because i i love puzzles and these these puzzles are going to become very interesting when i can finally get my hands on the fucking book i will finally be able to say okay um where where is the truth because we have two conflicting viewpoints where is the truth because this is going to open up new avenues of truth between what the broker see what the titan saw and where somewhere in between that lies the truth so i'm i'm very very excited for the future of world of warcraft in that sense so that's why i don't i'm not at all bothered by the new book made any updates regarding the book's availability <laughs> blizzard updates elodi what are you talking about do Bl does Blizzard update us on anything these days? A Blizzard update would be nice, but it's a it's a fucking pipe dream at this point. Um, the only updates we get, let's see, let's 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 do ourselves a fucking favor, right? Twatter, let's go over to Twatter and we'll we'll see what the fuck is going on here. Um, should I tell people that we're live? Do you think the people of Twatter deserve to know that we're live? Or should we just leave it? Fuck it, we'll let the people of Twatter know. Um... We talking... Shadowlands lore new book spoilers because i do have book spoilers for you all uh come say hi yeah oh, fuck it that's fine i think all right let's go uh let's go to the warcraft devs twatter and we can sort of uh sort of check so the warcraft devs twatter page looks as follows they have um 19 hours ago we are currently working on some sanctum domination hotfixes nice um we're going to kick off nice book stuff no book stuff this was before the book launch so no book stuff um no book stuff okay so no book stuff um they, they seem to pretend at this point that either the book doesn't exist which would make sense right it, it's like a child what Blizzard is doing now is basically like what children do. So if you go to a child and you sort of put your hands in front of your eyes, the child thinks you're gone. Um, Blizzard have done that with their book. It just sort of gone. Doesn't exist. Doesn't exist. And if they think it doesn't exist, then it doesn't exist, right? Um, so we'll never know what's going to happen with this book. Yeah, it is sort of... The, the sad part is, it is it's exactly what they do with all of their problems. And it's exactly what they shouldn't be doing with all of their problems. What Blizzard should be doing with their problems is actively engaging the fucking community in their problems. We would have so much more respect for Blizzard if they just came out and said, Hey, bros. So we know these things are wrong. We do apologize. We're going to work on fixing it. Um... Because there's a lot of content grids now that's sort of leaving for Final Fantasy, and that that is... I can't help but think that the tipping point is close. 
more and more content creators are embracing Final Fantasy. Um, you now have content creators that you would have thought would probably never leave World of Warcraft. Not so much saying, because Asmongold never said that he's going to leave World of Warcraft. In fact, he said he will be back. But I don't know, when's the last time you guys actually saw Asmongold play? Because he seems very happy with Final Fantasy. He seems very happy with Final Fantasy. And Kanye has, it's not a case of me betraying you for Final Fantasy. I've been playing Final Fantasy for a while now. In fact, I would like to say I was first. Before any of these wow fuckers started switching to Final Fantasy, before Balila or anyone started talking about Final Fantasy, I was on stream and I was talking to the people on stream and I said, all right, guys, I will try it. I will try it and we'll see, right? I didn't try it on stream first. I, I first just started making videos, right? Um, just sort of recording for two hour playtime. Ask Alex, he, he was the unlucky fucker that I had to edit those. But no, I, I don't really play games on stream. Um, Lady Survival, how you doing? Just got here. Are we talking about Grammar of the Shadowlands? Yes, we are. Um, we are going to be talking about that. But I do think that it's... Um, I do think it's a very bad look for World of Warcraft in general when all of their biggest content creators are leaving for Final Fantasy. And it doesn't matter whether or not the players are leaving. It matters what the players who aren't playing at the moment is going to do when it comes time to come back. Because right now, one of the big reasons a lot of people always come back to World of Warcraft is players like myself, right? World of Warcraft content creators, Asmongold, uh, Annie. Uh, these are content creators that usually build the hype for the next expansion. But what happens when most of those content creators go, nah, bro. I'd rather play the new Final Fantasy patch than play the next expansion, right? What do you do then when your hype train is no longer there to help you? Um, Stebby, thank you for gifting us up. Did really fucking appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the gifted sub. Can we get some love and chat for Stebby and his gifted sub? Thank you so much, dude. Really appreciate that. Um, if you have time, you should check out his Final Fantasy Trauma competition. That was just comedy gold. He's so good with that shit. It's a new day for a new world. Arnold, how are you doing? I think I have beta access to new world. I think so. Um, I should. Even though I'm not sold on New World. I don't think New World is going to be anything spectacular. And I've got a, a, a sort of weird itch for tower defense. I want to play a tower defense game. But... I don't know what, like, I, I don't know where to find a good tower defense game, so. I'm trying to look. Where's my fucking new world? Um. Here we go. Which one is it? Is it this closed beta one? I'm assuming it's the closed beta one, I suppose. Um. Balloons, Tower Defense. Needs a strong storyline. Well, or Tower Defense, apparently. I love Tower Defense games. Tower Defense games are stupidly fun. Balloons, Tower Defense. Is that good? What do you think about the new LOL cinematic event? I don't think I've watched that yet. I'll download the beta for... Um, just quickly show you what I'm busy with. I'll download the beta for New World. Um... Do I want to go J or do I want to go? Um, I think J is fine. Oh, it's a fucking plane. Holy shit. Yeah. Wait, is which one is my fucking proper hard drive? Uh, J is the slow boy. Yeah. Yeah, get it on the slow boy. Should be fine. 
Next, I agree. Finish. Right, okay, so that... Uh, we'll download it now. We'll see how it goes. Um, Blizzard doesn't give a shit about me as an individual, but they will miss my money. I have given them thousands over the years between multiple... Uh, between multiple life services, wild tokens, store mounts, store apparel, mugs, bliss cons, etc. My six month sub ends in two weeks and I won't renew my sub and I didn't buy the new mount. I'm tired of them treating us as enemies or idiots and giving us pig shit for content outside of raids. So I have a video that's literally already uploaded on my channel. Um, I'm literally just waiting for tomorrow when the video goes live where I'll be talking about some of this. But you are correct. Right, um, the current content that Blizzard designs in their game is not how it's supposed to work. It's not how it's supposed to work. We are not getting the good fucking content. We are not getting content that is anywhere near enough for the amount of money that we pay for this fucking game. Shit about me as an individual, um, starting in a few hours. I am downloading it now. We'll see. I, I, I might try it tonight uh, after the gym, but I'm not. I'm, I'm genuinely speaking. I did not like the original beta. Like when I played the beta, well, when was this? Three, four months ago? When was the last beta? Uh, I did not like that. I played like a grand total of six hours and I was like, you know. Not going to do this fucking again. Um, Ravy G. Thank you so much for the one sub. Did really fucking appreciate that. 36 months in a row. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now your mom. Also, hi. Ravy G, how you doing, brother? Um, the world of HB Lovecraft. I don't know enough about the, the, the entire universe of H.P. Lovecraft. It's too big and some of the books are really fucking boring. Um, so I probably would never dive straight into the world of H.P. Lovecraft, but I have done videos in the past where I include a lot of the stuff for um, H.P. Lovecraft, like a lot of the stories within H.P. Lovecraft. Um, but the books themselves, there's like a bunch of fucking H.P. Lovecraft books that I just do not like. They're hard to read, hard to follow, not that much fucking fun, right? Um, but I am a fan of his of his specific box, a, a big fan of his. Um, just get home and I'm refreshing shower, and now it's Devil Latest time. Talk about shower, bro. I literally had to shower in the cold for two fucking days. Two days, bro. Ice cold shower. Do you have any idea how much that sucks in the winter? I did not have fun. Anyways, let me just quickly look at my Discord here. Because um, I, I have a couple of... Do you guys want some spoilers? Would you guys like some new book spoilers? I mean, it's fine if you don't. I'll, I'll keep it to myself. All right, let's just quickly make this bigger. You guys can actually see what the fuck I'm looking at. All right, spoil us away. We need something to look forward to. All right, so just wanna be clear before we get into the spoilers. I have no idea how, I have no way of verifying any of this. It could be complete bullshit. It could all be true. I don't have the book. Because apparently the book doesn't exist. Well, it does exist and it doesn't exist. It's sort of like Pandora's box. Only it's Pandora's box if you sort of linked it with Shorin... Uh, what's that guy's name? Shorin, Shoringer's cat, right? It's when you combine the two. So you have Pandora's box, which means if the book is available, the world might end, right? But then also you can't know if the book is available because it could either be available or it's not available depending on the box that you're not allowed to open because if it is available it seems the world might end this is at least what i've gathered from twitter right 
So based on how angry people are that they can't get the book or some people because they can't, can get the book, it feels like this might be the thing that sets off World War Three. No, no, I'm not. I'm not saying it will, but it does appear as if this might be this might be the catalyst. Years from now, people historians might look back and say the world was already pretty triggered. I mean, Blizzard released this book that didn't release, but it did release, and a war was started. So just just to throw that out there, so we all know what the fuck is going on. Let's start at the first. According to the book Leaker, domination is described as both a language and a force invented and wielded by the Primus to bind the Jailer to the Maw. Now, again, I have no evidence of this. I have no idea. I have no way of knowing if this is true. I will say, however, how was it invented? How could a magic like this be invented by the Primus? It makes far more sense, because... If the, the language was in fact invented by the Primus, how is it that the Jailer could best him at his own magic? So the, this sort of... And I'm not saying that the guy who leaked the book is lying. I'm more saying that the, the brokers could be wrong about this, right? Um, so, yeah. The broker author isn't sure how mortals came to learn the art of rune forging, but when Death Knights runeforge their blades, they're using the Primus's magic rune language to do so. The Primus's original rune magic that, that's used in Maldraxxus and in runeforge, rune forging is distinct from the language of domination, which is stronger. Domination's singular purpose is the utter suppression of another, in this case, the Jailer's Evolve. The Primus used the language of domination to brand the sentence of the Eternal Ones onto his brother's flesh. So, in other words, the markings that we see on him, that literally is domination markings, right? Marb, yeah, it, it is a mess, but it, it's sort of... You'll see there's a bunch of different posts, right? That, that all comes from different sources, but it all sort of, it's combined into the best source we have right now for the story, right? Because none of us can get the book, seemingly at least. Um, how did Death Knights learn about runeforging? Could it have been from Zuval, as Zuval was extracting the secrets of the Primus, Zuval taught them through Arthas. Because as far as I'm concerned, that, that's really the only explanation for it. Zuval taught Arthas how to use this rune magic in order to increase the strength of his champions. And that's how they got it, right? Um, pretty interesting, although I wouldn't say groundbreaking stuff. The next one. Odin's a dick, but we knew that. Anyone that doesn't think Odin is a dick at this point is, is a, hasn't been paying attention. Um, so yeah, a lot of contempt in the in the narration for forces of order. Interesting that the the brokers do not like order. Now they do actually have a link here or an actual picture. Since we first noted them in Oribos, it became apparent that living mortals fixate upon their physical appearance, including their inexplicable reasons and accusation of equipment they find aesthetically pleasing. Yet no matter the configuration or complexity of the mortal flesh, it is merely a vessel for the soul. Entwined with the soul is the most precious and profitable resource of the entire Shadowlands, Adama. All right, the comment, uh, okay, a lot of contempt for the narration of the, uh, in the narration for the forces of order. So clearly the brokers do not like the Titans. For whatever reason, the Titans are not liked, which I think goes to the explanation of how the Shadowlands was found. And it does actually maybe destroy my own theory on this, or at least one of my theories on this. Remember, I believe that order invaded the Shadowlands in order to build Orobos and sort of bring the Shadowlands into order. But if the brokers do not like the forces of order, then it stands to reason that the forces of order may actually have been in conflict with the Shadowlands far more than just uh, working together, right? 
of a question now that the jailer has opened his portal how are we even supposed to stop him he can dominate anyone at will clearly as is played by jaina thrall and four dragon uh ravy g we're probably gonna have to stop him with the help of the primus and if it's true that this language is the language of the primus he's probably gonna build something that that's going to make us immune to the domination because it's according to them at least it's his language a comment in the margins apply implies that the elemental forces of spirit and decay have an effect on a soul's generation of anima but the that the exact nature of this relationship is unclear now that is very interesting For those of you that don't know, let me just reiterate, this was actually from an interview by Steve Denuser, where he explained that the primal forces of the universe is uh, spirit, decay, wind, fire, you know, the earth, the, the, there's five primal, six primal forces of the universe, right? These are sort of the bedrock, and from all of the other, well, these forces are present in all of the other forces, right? And the cosmic forces, forces are sort of the high magics of the universe. So spirit and decay being responsible for the generation of anima. Very interesting. It also stated anyone who practices low magics, such as shamanism, is inherently unreliable, as is the magic itself. Oof. Oof. Shots fired. Uh, who's, the, who's the shaman players in chat? How many of you play shaman? Ravy G, I'll get to your question in a second. Um, because if you're a shaman, you're inherently unreliable and your magic itself is also doesn't matter. No one gives a fuck about your magic. Just wanted to put that out there. The coiled serpent is considered a symbol of the first ones and the brokers have noted its presence in both Ouroboros and other places along their travels. So the coiled serpent... Uh, that means that the the sigil that was given to Zuval, you know, the sigil with the eternal, the infinite, uh, the infinity symbol on it. That means it must have been given to him by the first ones, lending even more evidence to a theory that I have. I already made a video on that theory. You guys should see it within the week. Really interesting comment from the broker author that the that the wild attendants insist that the arbiter has been has always been fair oh, oh listen to this this is actually this this is sort of mind-boggling right the comment from the broker author is that while the attendants insist that the arbiter has always been fair and impartial he has found evidence that suggests she may not have always been so benevolent what do you make of that? So in other words, she's not always nice. But what's the argument that he's making there? So the attendant says that the arbiter has always been fair and impartial. However, he's found evidence that suggests she may not have always been so benevolent. In other words, there was a change in her. Something changed that made her less benevolent. He also notes that the attendants have no records of why the Arbiter was chosen for her task and why the First Ones placed so much trust in her to basically be the key cog in the mechanism of death. It does imply that we're being lied to, absolutely. 100% implies that we're being lied to. Because first and foremost, she, she wasn't always as benevolent as she is now, which means that something else is afoot here, right? Uh, hard enemy, thank you much for hanging out. Really appreciate it. Take care of yourself. The other thing, of course, is that they don't know why she was chosen, in which case it is fair to argue that whatever else is true, the Shadowlands did not always function the way that it functions now. Is there anyone that disagrees with that line? Is 
Is there anyone that disagrees with me on that? Good. I disagree, but that's out of habit. That's fine, Ray VG. That's fine. Um, it is said that Fate Scribe, Fate Scribe Rotal has the power to affect the destinies of living mortals. The fuck? Explain to me how. The Arbiter is supposed to be the only one with the ability to affect the destinies of the living mortals. So how can a, a Fate Scribe do this? Something is wrong within the system. I'm not saying that the Jailer is the answer. I'm just saying something is very, very clearly fucking wrong within this system. When a Fate Scribe, whose job wasn't to be the Arbiter, has the ability to affect the outcome, that's a problem, right? The Winter Queen particularly favors Sonarius, treating him much as the Broken Oats like family. More evidence of uh, Winter Queen Elune connection? I think so. B7, it may have been. It may have been. Uh, Zexix, I could not disagree with you more. Perhaps Fate Scribe was once an Arbiter candidate? I don't think so, because the Arbiter seems to be one of the Eternal Ones, or at least bolt on par with the Eternal Ones, whereas the Fate Scribes don't seem to be that, right? They don't seem to be that. However, the fact that the Winter Queen favors Sonarius is more evidence that Elune is the sister of the Winter Queen, at least in my mind. Um, we have the Broker's Book here, then we have the next one here. Those born on the world of Azeroth are very important. I wish I had the book so that I could know why. I made this comment at the beginning of the Shadowlands. Azeroth seems to be special. I don't know why, but there's something about Azeroth, something about us being born on Azeroth that is incredibly rare, probably almost non-existent within the Shadowlands. The fact that Azerothian souls can actually tie to relics of the first ones, um, and for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, if you, if you go into Oroboros for the very first time and you do the tour, Right, where you sort of go to the four different places, five different places in the in Arabos. One of them takes you to the Fate Scribe, right? If you talk to that Fate Scribe, he explains to you that our souls are tethered to Azeroth. And for some reason, somehow, when we arrived in Arabos, our souls automatically tied to the relics of the first ones. So that even if we die in the Shadowlands, we will always come back. Our, our souls sort of just latch on to something and it just remains latched. Which, why? Right? Why is that happening? And for some reason, it seems like all of my fucking... You look like you've lost there we go. Okay. I was wondering why this wasn't working. Things I said about the Arbiter are just for fun, but I have a real question. The Arbiter is a machine, but benevolent. Is this a word you would use to describe a computer or machine? No, but it's more a sign, Zigzix, that she might not be a computer. So the fact that in this they actually argue, right, that they don't know who chose the Arbiter for her task and that the Arbiter wasn't always so benevolent suggests that the Arbiter is not just a machine. The Arbiter was perhaps forced to become what she is now. Perhaps this was done against her will as well. Perhaps we will see the new Arbiter now that she's free, right? Um, then we have a callback to Velen's Prophet's Lesson short story. Uh, Fandon Descor was a name he gave to a world he saw in his visions falling to the Burning Legion. What's interesting is the short implies Velen made up the name, but the Brokers uses the same one. Broker author calls the stewards exasperatingly helpful and abysmally cheerful. I think we can all agree on that. The author seems really, really into Carestia. 
they seem to have uh, even based on the pages that amazon sort of shared like the pages before the book went live th they seem to have a very special place for carestia right um shady x how you doing bro uh so that that is as far as i'm concerned very very interesting uh why carestia because they do they 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 want to get into bastion at all costs bastion is sort of like the place that they can't go but they really want to go there um so shady x we actually spoke about that chart um a while back let me just quickly we spoke about that i think on friday uh let me just quickly check here for you hold up uh the, when did we talk about the the cosmology map can anyone remember um would have been this one the one that ryan just commented on no nah, i can't fucking remember which video it is hold up we can check for you dear blizzard we can't keep doing this okay it's this one so if you go to my content it should be there we go these two videos part one and part two right uh this is on uh echo live is the channel's name uh it's all the vods so all of my twitch vods are uploaded to this channel and you'll find it under uh dear blizzard we can't keep doing this part one and part two so if you want to see my discussions on the cosmic chart you can you can go there um because that was when was this hold up um july the 17th so that was that was when i uploaded it so i think it was on the 16th that i uh that we discussed that all right um the brokers are very wary of the process of soul binding as it is a process that allows no deception between bond mates i have a feeling that our soul binds are gonna fuck us later um frostmourne helm of domination lore the author isn't sure how they came into the Lich King's possession, being vessels of domination, but once again hints at the long-running Nathrezim conspiracy. The author describes Sylvanas as polarizing. Now, here's something that might piss a lot of people off. There is an interesting point made by the broker that I hadn't considered. Given the timeline of events, Sylvanas must have been the first mortal to enter the moor and return from it, thus making her... The original Moorwalker. Which would mean that Sylvanas herself was chosen by Azeroth long ago. Because the reason we can leave the Moor is because of Azeroth. We don't quite understand why Azeroth allows us to do this. But because of Azeroth, we are able to go, come and go within the Moor as we please. How many people don't like this bet? How many of you are really pissed off by this last bet here? I like it. Uh, is the detected evidence of lack of benevolence in the past in the Arbiter's part actually evidence from of Zival's control of the sigil? The Eternal Ones were hiding from the Broker Shadow and Denizen. Shay CD, I don't think so. I don't think it has anything to do with Zival. Um... Not pissed. I think it's interesting. So take her place in the mall. Let me kill Sylvanas. I'm fine with it. Uh, I thought Sylvanas only returned because of the nine making a pact with her. Minion, but the very fact that she was able to return is unheard of. Technically, we should not be able to leave the Shadowlands at all. Technically speaking, the, the Shadow or the Moor is a prison nothing should be able to escape it in fact the the denizens of Arabos says as much we were the first to ever be able to leave the moor right the, this has never happened before the moor actually starred when we left it so the fact that she could have done it even if she made a pact with the nine it should technically not be possible for her to leave uh, it wasn't until the great sundering that Zuval could get some of his forces out. Right? Um, how do you feel about that, Ben on Savannah? I think it's very interesting. The fact that Savannah is the first Moorwalker. 
I think it's very interesting. I just don't know how Blizzard is going to explore that, right? I don't know how Blizzard is going to explore that. Considering all of the fuck-ups Blizzard have made with Sylvanas' story, I'm not filled with hope. Let me put it that way. I'm not filled with an incredible amount of hope that Blizzard is going to do her story correctly. Um, everything that Blizzard have done with Sylvanas makes no sense. Um, the fact that she she kills thousands of elves right that in and of itself is so we make jokes about this quite often and it's sort of fun to poke fun at it but considering the fact that she killed tens of thousands of elves right regardless of what the alliance have done and what the elves have done also that in and of itself is not something that can just be forgiven right? it's not something that you can just forget about the fact that blizzard did that makes it impossible to tell any forgiveness story after this that makes any sort of fucking sense, right? So Blizzard is sort of twisting themselves into knots to try and write themselves out of the very fucking pitfall that they've write, wrote, written for themselves, which is, no matter how they do it, it's going to leave a bunch of people going, the fuck, right? It's going to leave a bunch of people going, what's the story? Um, not to mention just how stupid the burning of Tildrasil was in the first place. You know, we had four or five different theories of things that could have happened to Tildrassil, which would have been a million times better than Sylvanas burning the fucking tree down, right? Blizzard seems to be going their own way with this story, so it's going to be... It's going to be a wild ride, let's just say that, with whatever is going to happen to Sylvanas. It's going to be a wild ride and one that most of us will disagree with towards the end of it. Because uh, it seems these days Blizzard not only designs their game for their players to disagree, but they also write their story in such a way that the players disagree. Um, the Helm of Domination and Frostmourne. Okay, let's, let's do thus. The evidence I have gathered during my writing of this tome establishes a clear pattern showing that the Banished One's plans have been in motion for some time. I refer once again to the world of Azeroth and the aforementioned entity known as the Lich King. Given the fearful tones in which some living mortals spoke of this being, you will understand my surprise to learn that one who most recently bore that title, High Lord Bolvar Fordragon, has been welcomed into the eternal city of Oribos, and was instrumental in rescuing several figureheads of Azeroth nobility from the Jailer's Clutches. Prior to Fordragon, a human prince named Arthas Menethil claimed the title of Lich King, and before him an orc shaman called Nerzul. The remnant of the crown wore by all three, the Helm of Domination, is now under guard in Oribos, where the High Lord has drawn upon it, uh, its residual magics, apparently at great personal risk, to spy on the Banished One and his allies. Yet the Helm was only one of the vessels of Domination, the other, a blade called Frostmorn, proved an even more insidious conduit of the Jailer's will. For not only did this weapon strike down its foes and possess the ability to raise the fallen into undeath, but it was said to draw in its victims souls, and we may presume essences of a similar nature, and keep them imprisoned within the blade. Furthermore, if the account of the forsworn Carrion Uther the Lightbringer is to be believed, Frostmourne could even shatter a soul and leave its fragments with an unhealable wound. Perhaps it is a relief to all that Frostmourne was broken in battle prior to Baldur IV Dragon becoming Lich King, theoret theoretically releasing the souls bound within it. Again, I stress that Uther's account has yet to be verified, but the former Paladin of Azeroth claims that his own soul still feels incomplete. If true, we can only speculate where the remaining fragment is being kept. How the Runeblade Frostmourne and the Helm of Domination came into the Lich King's possession, these instruments being born of the power of the Maw and essential to the Jada's plot has yet to be fully explained. Nor is it clear why the leaders of the Burning Legion who unleashed the Lich King upon Azeroth believe this entity to be serving not the machinations of death, but of disorder. Oof. So they wish to say that the Burning Legion was truly fooled by the Lich King, by the creation of the Lich King. 
One possible answer lies within a tome recently recovered in Revendreth that hints that one of the Jailer's allies, Sidonathrius, created agents designed to infiltrate the other cosmic forces that might threaten his realm. Could these unwelcome guests in service to Denathrius have deceived the demonic hierarchy of the Burning Legion and become the instruments of the Jailer's plans on the mortal plane? Should this theory prove accurate, the implications of such a complex and long long gestating conspiracy are chilling indeed. Now, I will say from the very beginning, there is a ton of evidence of this, even before this book came out. It is very clear that the Jailer have been playing a very long game, right? Um, which makes one wonder how much of our own universe have been influenced by him in ways that we probably still don't even fucking realize. Digit, how you doing, brother? Daddy Denathrius. Um, I, I, I wonder what... I don't think sex with him would be as fun as you might think, Lady Survival. Um... Just a, just a guess, but I don't think it would be as fun. Um, there might be so much more that we're yet to see. Like, things that are yet to be revealed to us. People might always have liked medicine or a frizzy hobby's writing, but it never got this muddy. True. True. The, the problem is that at least when it came to medicine and a frizzy hobby, they they seem to have very generalized stories that they wanted to tell and they understood the the end goal of their stories right so they knew where they wanted to start and where they wanted to end the story the new sort of blizzard writing team seems to sort of just throw stuff at the wall and if it sticks it sticks if it doesn't we'll just rewrite it later right good call most likely people complaining and i'll mention the way of resolution gonna get mute a minute all right Sophia. it could be i don't see how it could be it could be very sore, but I don't see how it could be fun, Lady Survival. Um, but then again, you might be into that. All right, so the brokers state that their purpose is leaving their realms of origin was to learn the truth of the First Ones and claim their secrets. Mentions several centers of knowledge of the First Ones. Arabos, Kothia, Baroneth. So these are centers of knowledge of the First Ones. Baroneth and Nirim On, among others. The archives in Oribos and the singing stones of Nirim On confirm that the First Ones made not only the Shadowlands, but also the fabric of all realities. There is a great pendulum that swings between the forces life and death, and lesser ones, at least according to the broker, between light and shadow and order and disorder. The first ones also made pantheons to embody their influences. The brokers are now very interested in Azeroth. Why? Why do you, chat, think that the brokers are very interested in Azeroth? After everything we've learned now there, right? The brokers have been following the path of the first ones. They've been collecting and, and drawing links between the forces of life and death, the pendulum that constantly swings. Steve, the news are to be trusted. Uh, it means that these forces are constantly working to keep each other in balance, as well as pendulums that swings between the other lesser forces, according to the brokers. But why is Azeroth the one that they are so interested in right now is it perhaps because azeroth does not uh reveal any of the traits that would make her a clear eternal one or even a clear titan or even a clear lord of chaos could it be that azeroth is something different something more I'm not saying it is just saying it could be. The Lords of Chaos is sort of uh, speculative, right? Ten Quan, how you doing, brother? The the Lords of Chaos is sort of speculative, right? So it's a it's a speculation thing where if chaos exists, there must be Lords of Chaos, right? At least according to the brokers here, um, the Pantheon, the first one seems to have made Pantheons, and it seems like the first ones may have made pantheons for each of the forces. So if there is if there is a pantheon of order, there must be some kind of pantheon of disorder, right? Do 
Tank one, I can very easily get on board with that with that theory. I, I could very easily get on board with that theory. You know, how you doing? Um, so my personal theory about Azeroth is that Azeroth is the center point of the First Ones universe. Um, we know that the snake, Ouroboros, the idea of that which is first will be last, that which is last will be first, the, the beginning is the end, the end is the beginning, the Alpha and the Omega. Um, life started as life will end on Azeroth. This brings into... Uh, focus the emerald dream the emerald dream is not just a dream it is literally the dream of azeroth it transcends and expands throughout the whole great beyond and it formulates and forces the world that azeroth dreams so azeroth literally dreams reality and through her dream the first ones ordered it they they were the first ones to ensure that this dream would create the titans then went a step further and ensured that this creation would happen unimpeded if you will right but at the end of the day this is what i at least believe uh is azeroth azeroth is the beginning and the end she is the one that ties everything together there is a reason why at the beginning of the shadowlands Zuval says, uh, not Zuval, but one of the servants of Zuval says, um, death comes for the soul of your world. If you are to, to unmake reality, you require the soul of Azeroth. The soul has to be absorbed because only Azeroth can dream reality. Without Azeroth, there is no reality. And just like that, I've come up with a brand new speculation theory I want to record tonight. Oof. Let me write this down. This is a good theory. Fuck my life. Hold up. I like this theory. Scripts. Hold up, I'm writing scripts. Give me two seconds. Uh, Azeroth is... Is the vehicle of reality. Reality. Without her, reality cannot exist. Links between... Between Azathoth, between Azathoth and Azeroth, established? Question mark. Um, Azeroth, the Alpha, the Alpha planet, the Alpha planet. Question mark. All right, save that shit. All right, there we go. Uh, I, I have this sort of. We'll, we'll I'll, I'll work on this a little bit later. Andy, no, but but I, yeah, I, I have a new theory that that I think I like. <laughs> so we'll see if I can record it tonight. Um, the news is said that things were called different depending on who and where they are. Um, Jez actually being, uh, bailing on this reality and that portal goes to Dreamhaven. That would be fucking amazing, wouldn't it? Azeroth is manipulating everything. Blades, how you doing, bro? So maybe 9.2 could take place in Silithus. Sargeras' sword would be the, would be perfect to destroy Azeroth. I don't think it's about destroying Azeroth. Ooh, I need to write that down. Um, it's not about destroying Azeroth. It is about, it's not about destroying Azeroth. Her soul must remain intact. In order to remake reality, soul must remain intact. In order to remake reality, the soul has to exist, right? If you were to kill Azeroth, reality would cease to exist because Azeroth is reality. Reality is Azeroth. Uh, so if you kill Azeroth, you would effectively. Uh, Zuval would not have the ability to remake the universe in his image or to make a universe that would sort of um, 
Zuval would not be able to make a universe that dominate that he can dominate because the only ability to create a universe is with Azeroth um because she is the one that dreams she dreams reality right um Elodie, if I am correct Blizzard used basically the story of HP Lovecraft's Azathoth one-on-one -on -one, right um Get the mage, the reason that doesn't happen, so the reason our souls never enter into the Shadowlands is because we are the protectors of Azeroth. We are literally her children. So, um, we have a sacred charge that was given to us by Azeroth. Azeroth was the one who gave us the sacred charge. The sacred charge is eternity, immortality, right? At the price of servitude. So, we are the ones that, that maintains her reality we are the ones that maintain uh, her worlds and we are the ones that defend her against any threats um and in in exchange for our servitude we get immortality and when i say we i'm talking about the player characters we are the children of azeroth um so azeroth basically protects us from any sort of uh, any sort of harm and also protects us from ever having to go into the Shadowlands. The question, of course, then becomes... Ooh, ooh, I need to write this down. Hold up. Um, what vision did Azeroth show Sylvanas when she touched the Azerite? Was that from... Azeroth or something else question mark hmm um ghost bro thank you much for the follow really fucking appreciate that I agree but it still makes Azeroth special because it can't it can prevent death and great life true you're already dead ever come in fruition how do you think many is one I do not know I do think that that's a story that Blizzard sort of gave up on long ago right um so the thing is the vision that azeroth showed sylvanas it's one where she is queen over everything where she rules over everything why did azeroth show that to sylvanas because all of that led to sylvanas's actions leading up to the shadowlands did sylvanas want or did the Azeroth wants Sylvanas to do what she's done now? Blue Fairy, thank you much for hanging out. Really appreciate it. Take care of yourself. What do you think, chat? W what could be the answer to that? Tainquan, it's possible, although unlikely. The first one seems to be far more powerful than the other cosmological forces. A future in which Sylvanas didn't do what she did would lead to Azeroth's death? Maybe. Maybe if Sylvanas didn't expose the Jailer sooner, um, or maybe Azeroth knew that she needed the Jailer exposed, because with more time, the Jailer would have been able to become too much of a problem? What if Sylvanas is destined to destroy and create a new reality, like somehow we stop the Jailer, but Azeroth still wants to be remade? Not by the Jailer, though, but by Sylvanas. Ooh. Ooh, Lady Survival. Lady Survival, well done. Um, does, Azeroth, does Azeroth wish to die? question mark so many question marks so little answers um i have a very strong head cannon that the windrunners are serving in loon in some way hey hello hey, you're not alone on that i've made videos on that too savannah's was the champion of both the jailer and azeroth uh there are two sides to her yes but the the, the the second side was never part of the deal right the second side have only just been restored so it definitely can't be the, it definitely can't be the the second side of Sylvanas right now. Uh, and Sylvanas, she is too torn up 
uh, prior to the the reinstatement of her old soul, she she would not have been able to work one way or the other, right? Um, mm. Tasty, that's possible. She could be the new queen of all dead. It is possible. The problem is just that all of these stories that we're currently highlighting, um, this happened before. Duffin just said it. All of the all of these stories currently that we're highlighting happened before. And it was actually written by the same fucking company. Right? It's one thing if you steal a story from someone else, but when you start stealing your own fucking stories, that's where things get real. Um, because this, this is the story of Kerrigan. They, they may literally is just, well, have copied pasted the story of Kerrigan and, uh, be done with it, right? Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I genuinely don't know. Tatiana, how you doing? Needs to come true. I will set us all free. Lady Survival, the problem is she thought. She thought that they would, uh, she would set us all free, right? Uh, this is the one part that I think a lot of people, and even myself, someone that loves Sylvanas, needs to come to terms with. Sylvanas was played. And I would have it no other way. The Jailer absolutely played her. 100% Sylvanas had no control. He used her because he knew he could. He knew that she only had a, a slither of her soul. She had no idea. Uh, she, he played on her anger. He used the fact that all she was left with was rage and anger, and he used that against her. He, he managed to point her anger and her rage in the right direction, and then just sat back and watched, right? And the reason I would have it no other way is the Jailer is supposed to be a godlike creature. If Sylvanas managed to play him, what respect would we have for him? If he could be outdone by a fucking mortal, right? Why should we fear him then? The fact that he could do with Sylvanas, Sylvanas who basically would be one of the smartest warriors on Azeroth, the fact that he could play her in such a way that she had no idea what he was doing just goes to the power that he has, right? Um... So, I don't, I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing that Savannah's was played. Um, Jayla had Savannah's other part of the soul. He knows exactly what was missing. Exactly. He knew what was missing, so he knew what to do and what not to do, right? Uh, Balnazar said that Savannah's is hot, was still Alvin. He kind of commented that Savannah's cannot be trusted. Um, Tenkwan, so... You see, the Jailer made a similar argument, right? Where he told her that she still clings to her mortality, right? So, why does he say that? Because the only thing that Sylvanas has that, that was left to her is rage, anger, and according to the book, The Four Horsemen, the short story, a slither of humanity is left within, uh, like, a slither of humanity is left within a dead soul, right? When you get brought back through necromancy. And it's that slither of her that eventually made her realize that the Jailer had played her, right? But now you have to understand the unfair advantage that the Jailer had. And this is why people who love Sylvanas should not feel like this is a kick in the teeth for Sylvanas. What you have to understand is this is a guy that knows exactly who he's dealing with, right? He, he has seen Azeroth's full soul. Because he has the other part of it. So looking at the soul, he can go, right, all of these things, her empathy, her love, all that is this. So what's left is whatever isn't this. So he knew exactly what to say and how to say it.
I'm gonna write something down and then I'll say it. What if Azerite is from Zuval? It makes sense. The King of Diamonds have been made a pawn. A pawn of what? Biggest question we've ever asked. The one question that has literally zero answers because if the king of diamonds was in fact made a pawn he wasn't made a pawn of the old gods because eventually the things that he did led to the end of the old gods so unless the old gods sort of got mixed up and forgot which side they were fighting for um <laughs> magni was not controlled by the old gods the problem with magni being controlled by Azeroth is the control nearly led to her own downfall, right? If 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 Sargeras' sword went an inch deeper, she could have died. They never say a pawn by who. But now let's let's incorporate a couple of things here, right? So first of all, we have the King of Diamonds. The King of Diamonds. The King of The King of Diamonds have been made a pawn, right? of diamonds have fuck my life made a pawn all right then we also have from nazoth so nazoth tells us right that she the banshee queen the banshee will unleash death will unleash the darkness and i alone i alone can save you from this fate. This is what Nazoth tells us about what the Banshee Queen is planning. She tells us that she will use the helm, right, to unleash darkness on Azeroth and that he alone will be able, uh, like he alone can save her, uh, can save us from this fate. Everything that Magni has done, everything, that Magni has done, he's done because he thought that he was acting on the instructions of Azeroth. If Azerite, however, is not from Azeroth, but from Zuval, and I do believe that there are creatures inside Torgos that drop something that's very similar to Azerite. Is it in Torghost or is it in... Um... Mm. Where is it? Uh, is it Ardenweald? The the little mischief things that's working. Uh, they they work for they they work together with the Drust. The Drust obviously works with Zuval. Um, but you have these rewards that look very similar to Azerite, right? Very similar to Azerite. If Azerite is from Zuval, then Zuval have played his part absolutely perfectly. You see, he used us to get rid of Sargeras and the Burning Legion. Perhaps the one force that is trying to stop him. After they figured out, after Sargeras figured out what Zuval was doing and what Zuval was planning right? Sargeras wanted to stop him. He got rid of Sargeras. He then decides in incredible fashion to send us off to the old gods, another force that claims that they can stop him. We've basically, if true, we've paved the way for Zuval. Not so much friends. So just to be clear, they're not our friends. 
The old gods, the cosmological forces are not our friends. The cosmological forces are just forces. They have their own hopes and dreams and things that they want to achieve. And usually we're in the way, right? We're just ants that sort of have to be swept aside. Um, so I, I, would not, I would not argue that there are friends. But in this instance, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, right? So, yes, they were trying to help us not to free an incredible darkness. Azara actually says this as well. I'll just quickly fucking write that down as well. Because Azara actually says the same thing. Azara tells Sylvanas, treacherous banshee. Do you think me blind to the darkness you seek to unleash? Treacherous banshee. Do you think me blind to the darkness you seek to unleash darkness? Uh, why do we think that waking up Azeroth would be a good thing? Maybe she is in prison for a good reason. Some of us thought Zuval needs to be freed, but that wasn't a good idea either. Marcintha, it's not about her waking up. Uh, in fact, if I am correct on this, Azeroth can never wake up. She herself would not want to wake up. Because if my speculation is correct, Azeroth is reality. If Azeroth dies, or is, if Azeroth is woken up, then reality dies with it, right? Shay CD, I've still not been able to place that specific quote. The blind queen wields a scepter of bone. I have not been able to place that because it could be Sylvanas, right? It could be. Katrina Stars, how are you doing? Did you order? Uh, I did not get my book yet, no, but uh, I did order it. No one, I think. There's only a couple of people in the world that got their books yet, Katrina. Everyone else is st still sort of waiting. Um, the blind king queen wields a scepter of bone from the deep she calls forth doom. This could have been Azara, right? The problem with Azara is she never actually wield. She never actually had a scepter of bone. Although the scepter of bone could be, um, the the scepter of bone could be, what's the English word? Not theoretical. Um, what's the word? Metaphorical. Yes, it it could be a, a symbolic or a, a a metaphor, right? Uh, so I don't see how it could be A and R either. Again, the, the we need to figure out the blind queen wields a scepter of bone from the deep she calls forth doom right this would be someone whoever that might be that wields a scepter of bone could be death right a scepter of bone could be viewed as uh, the blind queen wields death from the deep she calls forth doom now it could also be it could be azara because in many ways azara Azara was using Sylvanas, right? And Sylvanas would be considered a, a symbol of death, a a um, bringer, a harbinger of death, right? Yeah, a, a scepter would be a sign of rain. So the Blind Queen wields a scepter of death, and uh, of bone. So in other words, some kind of but then a scepter of bone could also be analog uh, analogous to uh, a kingdom in ruin, a kingdom of death. Um, from the deep, though, suggests that it has to be some kind of ocean creature. That's why Azara makes a lot of sense. But then from the deep could also be the great beyond, right? So somewhere from within the, the great beyond, uh, the blind queen wields a scepter of, uh, of bone. Um, I'm going to mull on that one. Like I've done fucking months and months now, trying to figure out all of these whispers and all of these things that I, that, that generally doesn't have a lot of place 
in the story. Could be a person wielding a scepter of bones uh, if she was blind. Draka could have been, sure. But I... I mean, the blind queen simply means that someone that doesn't understand what is going on, right? So it doesn't have to be blind as in can't see. It could just be... So most of the time when you call someone blind, what you're actually referring to is they're doing things that they... they they should not actually be doing, but they're blind to the truth, right? One could probably also make the argument that it is Azeroth. Azeroth wielded a scepter of bone. She, she wielded Sylvanas. And from the deep, she calls forth doom. They could mean Kalia, but I don't see how Kalia would call forth doom. It's not a line that suggests anything with the light and what they're interested in. So the old gods would almost never let a chance slip by for light, right? Could be an old goddess as well. It's entirely possible. It's entirely possible that it could be an old goddess. It could also be Elune, right? We've never seen Elune. What if we see Elune and she actually has a fucking scepter of bone? Considering the fact that Elune, we have more than enough evidence that Elune does come from the Shadowlands, there is a chance that Elune wields a scepter of bone. Perpetrator, how you doing, brother? So, it could also be Elune. The answers is literally fucking endless, to be fair. Right? There's like an endless array of answers that could that it could be. Why would Elune, though? What do you mean, why would Elune? I'm doing one of Laka, how you doing? I'm good. Perpetrator, thank you much for asking. Nathanos femur with his skull on top. I don't I don't know if it would be that specific. Right? So the scythe is one thing, right? The scythe is a weapon. But we would need to see Elune to know if she wields a scepter of bone. Um, but the scepter of bone could also simply be the the queen of of death, right? And if my speculation is correct. And I think it might be. I believe that at the beginning of time, when the Shadowlands first existed, Zuval and Elune ruled the Shadowlands together. Um, there's a couple of things that tie into this. The brokers say that a creature uh, or an entity of Elune's origins can never under any circumstances be trusted. The only other entity that the brokers do not trust is the Jailer. Now, the Jailer, according to what the Shadowlands tells us, Andy Loon is similar to the Eternal Ones, right? They're the same, because they're also Eternal Ones. Now, the fact that they do not trust Elun, to me, means that Elun may have been cut from the same cloth as the Jailer. Now, my speculation, my big brain theory on this, is that Elun and Zuval were made all-powerful. They had an incredible amount of power at their disposal. This power eventually... It, it was the undoing of Zuval, so to speak, right? So, because he had so much power, and this is why they don't trust the Loon, because a being of her origins, in other words, a being that was created with the, the cosmic power of the universe cannot be trusted they're too powerful and as we know absolute power corrupts absolutely um this is one of the reasons why zuval is considered titan plus plus and all the evidence now shows that zuval is not just considered titan plus plus because of all the anima in fact it seems like the anima has no need or the jailer seems to have no need for anima he doesn't seem to use it for himself in any way shape or form um so he's clearly on a different level 
to the other ones they also claim the primus at least claims that it took all of them working together to chain him into the mall like they they had to all work together to chain him into the mall um they they weren't even powerful enough to defeat him they had to chain him there and then you have the story of course of Anshe and musha uh from the uh folks and fairy tales book which tells the story of the sun and the moon fighting darkness and the sun taking a hit from darkness where his heart would be a wound that simply will not heal right um and again that's zuval his heart being empty could it not be zuval and it might be because he suffered that wound that he is incapable of continuing the legacy or the reason he existed for right the reason they made him and he became obsessed with actually destroying it because of his lack of empathy because everything in the shadowlands right now seems to echo this lack of humanity this lack of care this lack of empathy and it might be because he's literally trying to remake the universe in his own image he lost his empathy he lost hope he lost life and therefore he wants to make the whole universe like he is now What if it's Azeroth and she's wielding Sylvanas from the deep? Lady Survival, I said that too. Um, I think just after you lost internet, I, I said it could be Azeroth and her using Sylvanas, the Scepter of Bone, to actually further her own goals. It's Val and Loon on two sides. Uh, Tatiana, that's exactly what I'm what I'm getting at. Um, the picture also the the more evidence of this is the picture uh the the cosmological map um the cosmo map have a moon on the side of death and then a sun and a moon on the side of life which suggests that the moon whenever we talk about the moon we are talking about elune which suggests that elune may have been the original arbiter so to speak of the shadowlands so originally Zuval was was actually the one who determined the side of life and Elune determined the side of death and together they worked in order to keep balance within this universe but when Zuval suffered that blow to his heart by the darkness his love for life disappeared because his mortality was taken away from him the, his empathy was and so he basically wanted to undo all of it Blades, I think it's another part of the puzzle, right? Uh, Mapes, how you doing, brother? Um, it's another part of the puzzle. It's a, it's a part of the puzzle that so most people are very angry about the new book uh, or the new map. I think you should you should not look at it as a, a retcon of the original cosmology map. Instead, you should look at it as another piece of the puzzle, right? Um, we now have the, the cosmology map as viewed from the side of the Titans. But we also have a cosmology, cosmology map as viewed from the side of the Shadowlands. So the perspective changes, therefore the map changes. But both maps might be evidence of a, of a greater um, of a greater map, right? So I don't think we've seen the actual map yet. I think that this is two parts that would lead to the discovery of the actual map. But this is not the actual map. Uh, because it's only from a different perspective. That's what we're seeing right now. The blue child, uh, moon and all this. Uh, invalid, I genuinely don't know. I, I've not yet f thought through all of that. But the blue child could also be a creation of Azeroth, uh, of Elune, right? So the blue child, many people think that the blue child is Elune. But it might be that the blue child is in fact a creation of Elune. Something that came because of Elune, right and she has just allowed it might be one of her uh either um giant Raka, the problem is there's two theories some people believe her to be the white lady some people believe her to be the blue child um the reason people believe these different things is because it's never been confirmed because in its at its core what even is Elune has never been confirmed. <laughs> That's the problem. Elune herself has actually also not really ever been confirmed. Like, by name, she's not really ever been confirmed. She, she's a whisper, right? And she's a belief that the Night Elves hold. 
But in terms of who she actually is, it's sort of a mystery wrapped in a fucking mystery, right? So that that's sort of the biggest issue um, with the story of Idun, right? Um, so the blue child could be a defense mechanism that he loon bolt it might be possible that he loon bolt a blue child on almost every planet right and that the blue child is sort of uh, an amplifier for her worship so she gains power from everyone that worships and it's the blue child that sort of you know links all that power together making her more and more powerful um so the blue child might not necessarily be something specific. It might not necessarily be something important. It might just be something that is part of her, if that makes sense. Now, of course, then you get into a whole new level of convolution within the story. But at this point, if you don't want a convoluted story, maybe World of Warcraft isn't the story for you. Because it seems like the only thing Blizzard designs at this point is extremely convoluted stories. Which is weird. So Earthmind presented a long show with uh, Tumusha and Anshe in a time of sorrow. Winter Queen is awfully sorrowful, in my opinion, it's her. It's possible. Um, but the Winter Queen would almost guaranteed not have any relevance to stories on Azeroth. Lucky Penguin. There is zero evidence that the Winter Queen or any of the other Eternal Ones have ever been to the Great Beyond. Um, the veil would have probably been set up long before they could even make it there and they would almost definitely not have been there once the mortal races of Azeroth roamed Azeroth so the the chances of any of the mortal races of Azeroth worshipping an eternal one that is within the Shadowlands is slim to none um, if that is the case then well fuck the veil then clearly that the, why is the veil even there when they can move freely between the veil as much as they fucking want azeroth be the best way for blizzard to start everything all over again a new wow with no uh marcentha the so would it be the best way for blizzard of course it, it would of course katrina stars did i thank you for the tier one sub if i didn't thank you for the tier one sub i really fucking appreciate it. 28 months in a row thank you thank you thank you um I don't think Blizzard will ever make a WoW 2. I don't think there's any sort of interest in it. And more importantly, the, the bigger question that we have to ask is would we want current Blizzard to make WoW 2.0? Would I trust current Blizzard to make WoW 2.0? And the answer is almost certainly no. current blizzard is so obsessed with all their systems and so obsessed with the convolution of their game that wow to wow to would just be a mess from beginning to end now if world of warcraft could change their ways and their developers could actually start playing world of warcraft again um a wow to would be a very good idea in fact i think if if the blizzard developers actually like got forced to play world of warcraft they would probably decide that WoW 2 is the only way to save World of Warcraft. Um, because I don't see how else you'd do it. You've you've built such a, a miraculous house of cards where systems upon systems upon systems have formed the basis of the game for such a long time now, uh, almost six years, that you've had systems upon systems upon systems that trying to revert now to a more simpler time will probably is probably not something that could be on the cards um so yeah i i i think wow 2 is really one of the only ways to really save wow does that mean that another wow expansion can't be an amazing expansion of course not it's very possible that the next expansion for world of warcraft is again a great one and it, it blows us all away again and we all love the game again Will the next expansion for World of Warcraft be as good as World of Warcraft can ever be? No. No. Um, because if for World of Warcraft to be as good as it could ever be, 
Blizzard has to start over. And like we already discussed, they, they will not start over. Um, it is just what it is at this point. Um, the next expert will be good. Uh, that's not what I said. Uh, I see everyone going copium. That's not what I said. I never said that the next expansion for World of Warcraft will be good. I said it could be good. There's, di there's a difference. For example, Legion was good. Legion was not as good as many people think it was, but Legion was good. Legion, for me, was actually a pretty sucky expansion. Because as a raider that loved playing... Um, as a raider that loved playing alts, Legion fucking blew. They had absolutely sucked dick. The last good expansion for me as a raider was Wall of the Draenor. Um, that was the last time I actually had fun in World of Warcraft playing the game. Legion also had systems that killed the game for me as, as a raider, at least. Um, but Legion had a couple of things that saved it, that still made it interesting, right? And Blizzard could, by accident, stumble upon those as well. Classic of the Alke could be wild too. Characters and redone fresh. I don't think Blizzard would do that either, because doing that would require basically making two brand new World of Warcrafts, you know, in, in sort of parallel with one another, and I don't think Blizzard would ever do that. Enoch, so Copium... Copium is not actually a, a Twitch meme. Copium is a, a WoW meme specifically, right? Uh, it's sort of, it may have had its origins on Twitch. I'm not entirely sure, but I do know that it's become sort of the... It's become sort of the slur that is uh, lodged against the shells. Right? So it's been very big on Twitter for a while now it's sort of been like it's been everywhere on twitter like any shul gets immediate fucking um sort of ratioed with the comments copium 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 so yeah the thing is i would like Ah, uh, we've spoken about what I would like so many times. And I'm sort of out of time, sadly. I am out of time today, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for me to go. It's time for all of you to uh, go do whatever the fun things is that you guys will do. You know, when, when I'm when I'm gone. Sad face, of course. Um, I will be back tomorrow. As always, every day. You can find me right here on Twitch. Um, tomorrow, I'm getting married later today. Holy fuck. Uh, way to bury the lead, Lady Survival. Ladies and gentlemen, before I fuck off, can we get all the hearts in chat for Lady Survival? It's been a long road. She met her, she met her fiancé uh, on WoW after plenty of horrible shit uh, that she had to endure, believe me, based on at least what I know. She met the worst of the worst men prior to this and Derek uh, I believe his name is Derek uh, her current fiance soon to be husband seems to be an amazing guy so can we get all the hearts in chat I wish you nothing but happiness lady survival and uh, I hope li life just gets better from here and on that note on the note of love ladies and gentlemen I am going to love and leave you. I will not be getting married later today. I will be back tomorrow, though, with more speculation and theories. Uh, unless, of course, Sylvanas becomes available, in which case I might get married later today. Uh, but since she's in the game and I'm not, they just, they just, you know, fucking hang out and I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Be kind to each other. Be good to each other. And as always, I will see all of you tomorrow. Peace out, fam. Oh, by the way, uh, 
Kenneth, I don't raid. I don't raid people. I don't know how big he is. I, I don't know him personally. So let me just say this. I, I don't know him personally, but I don't raid people at all. And not because I'm trying to be a dick. It's actually because I, I don't want to be a dick. Raiding doesn't do what people think they do, right? Um, so let's, let's imagine for a second I'm bigger than he is. There is every chance that I'm going to steal viewers from him and almost every chance that he's not going to get anyone from me, right? Um, so that's why I do not raid people at all. Uh, because all you do is you show viewers from smaller channels that um, that there's better streams or bigger streams out there. Like the the studies have been done on this. The the uh, so people like Devin Nash and uh, Alpha Gaming, they've actually broken down the sort of how many viewers you gain from raids versus how many viewers you gain from doing the raiding, and it's the raiding party that always wins out. So that's why I've decided never to raid anyone. I mean, I have friends that's currently live, and I don't raid them either. Right? It's just sort of my. Um, just sort of my rule set if you will um andy it happens sometimes but most of the time it does not happen right um so yeah it's for our viewers multiple streams that i watch regularly uh, yeah well you guys can watch um you can watch whoever uh can he nft game Oh, you're talking about... Isn't that like one of the first NFT games ever? I think it's like one of the first, right? Uh, NFT games ever. Okay, Kanye, as I tell you what. Uh, DM me. Uh, send me a DM on, twi uh, on Twitch. With the guy's name. I'll go check him out. And uh, if I think that it's conducive, uh, I'll raid him tomorrow or something so if i if i can check him out uh i'll i'll go i'll i'll give him a raid tomorrow because i do think nft gaming is going to be amazing uh, i do believe that it's going to be it's not probably not going to be the future but it's definitely part of the future right so i'll definitely give him a check and then we'll we'll check back tomorrow and if he's live tomorrow i might give him a raid um anyways Oreb, you literally arrived right at the end of the stream. Again, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much for hanging out. Thank you so much for spending time with me. As always, I will be back tomorrow with more law discussions and all the rest of it. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Be kind and good. And I will see you in the next one. Peace out, fam.